by the way, small variables. Winners never stop. Losers never start. Follow the rules I will give you. Point of interest. To grab your stop loss, that's the most important thing actually. You put the grab closer in front of market structure. There is only one strategy that can guarantee your success. Over $9,000 top one FTMO trader in 2023. This one is from August 2022. A 17 grand payout. You need to watch that video. All my knowledge and experience, you are losing money, failing prop film challenges, the most beginner friendly training strategy. I am Luis Marquez since 2015. Making money in the market is simple and easy. I refuse to be a sheep to the system. After I learned the concept that I'm going to teach you in this video, in this A to Z Smart Money Concept Guide, I was able to grow my FTMO account from zero to over $50,000 in profit. So let's get started. For the next 90 minutes, I will break it up for you everything about Smart Money Concept. So if you don't have 19 minutes to invest in your trading journey, this video is not for you. In fact, that's one of the main reasons why most traders fail. And you will fail. You will never make money in the market if you don't fix this, the lack of commitment and discipline. For the 1% that are here to learn and make money trading, I have a special gift for you at the end of this video. A plug and play template with everything you need to do to pass prop film challenges. I will teach you the theory behind each concept using image and illustration. Then, we will go to my trading shark and see how the same concept work in action. So let's start talking about pay or I, point of interest. Pay or I also know has point of interest. It's a popular technical analysis tool used in the Forex market and smart money concept strategy. It's a concept that involves identifying specific price levels where the market is likely to experience a significant change in direction. Let's see this concept in action. Well, we need to start somewhere else. So let's start talking about point of interest. What's a point of interest? And also how can you select the best point of interest for taking your trades? Okay, it's the best zone to take your trades. As you can see in this little analysis, little trade I took right here, point of interest selection will define the quality of the trade you will take. So if you select a bad point of interest, you will probably get a stop loss or even a break even in your trade. And if you follow the rules I will give you in this video and select just the best point of interest, just the best of the best point of interest, you will be able to get more accuracy. So you will improve your strike rate and also make more money and lose less trades. So as you can see right here, point of interest selection is the base of this whole trade. We have, sorry, we have a point of interest exactly right here. We have another right here. We have another point of interest right here. We have point of interest right here. We have point of interest right here that this, that when I decided to take the entry, I follow it, I selected the point of interest and then took the entry. We have another point of interest right here and another point of interest here. And another one exactly right here. One thing you may not cite is that every single point of interest is also a supply or a demand level, but not all supply or demand level is a valid point of interest. So basically, as you can see, I was following the points the market leave it behind without mitigate, and that those points was selected as point of interest, but not in every single point of interest I took my trades. For example, I didn't take any trade right here, either here, as you can see exactly right here. Also, I didn't take any here. I didn't here. No, here, no, here, no. So all those zones 
I didn't take any trade. I just chose this zone to take the trade. Why? Right? That's probably what you are asking yourself right now. And the answer is simple. It's also another thing that we will talk about in this lesson. The answer is liquidity grab. Okay? As you can see here, we have a lot of, after we, we, we swept all the liquid that was in this high, press me this huge move to the upside, press catch a liquidity here, and I wasn't able to find an entry here. Okay? Price gave me the entry confirmation. We will talk about it also, as you guys can see here. We have this chop, right? You guys can see clearly here that I marked this chop. And we will talk about it as I told the guy, we will talk about chop in this lesson. But after this chop, I couldn't actually take the trade right here because I was a little bit skeptical about this entry. But I was following all the point of interest the market gave to me. And then when we swept the liquidity again of this high that gave me, that was the swept of the previous entry right here, I look at for the entry and this is the entry as you guys could see, can see, one to four risk reward trade using 4.4 pips of stop loss using the daily cycle trading strategy, okay? So this is a quick introduction about the point of interest. You can see that point of interest is very, very important and has a sit in the beginning. If you select a poor or a bad point of interest, you will probably get a stop loss or even a break even your trade, but if you select, if you pay attention and select just the best of the best of point of interest, you will get probably a good trade and you will make money and lose less trades. Okay, let's talk about point of interest selection. To understand and use POI in its full potential, we need to understand POI selection, point of interest selection. So let's talk about you need to learn point of interest selection, a powerful technique that reveals the even point of interest where the big players are in buying and selling. POI stands for point of interest. And in this guide, I will show you how to master it in easy steps. Let's see on the chart. Well, as I said to you guys, to select a point of interest, or the better you select your point of interest that are saying, the better will be your trades. So in this lesson, it will be a little bit longer in this, you know, little thing we will talk about. And I will explain to you guys how to select in above of all, how to validate your point of interest. That's the most important thing, actually. You can just select randomly your point of interest. And as I said to you guys minutes ago, not every supply demand level are point of interest, but every single time you select a point of interest, probably you will have also a supply or a demand level on this exact spot. So to select a point of interest, we have some rules we need to follow, okay? So we have some rules. Let me actually go up a little bit and then we can, I mean, we can start this part of this huge masterclass, okay? So you will also, you will have always some rules to follow when you're trying to select the best point of interest. So let me put right here, POI rules. By the way, drop a like and subscribe if you're liking this lesson, okay? You have some lessons you need to follow in order to select the best point of interest. One, the fifth thing you need to pay attention to it isn't structured often. A lot of traders, day traders, what money, ICT, whatever, I'll trade daily cycle to restructure, but I know other people trade variable things. A lot of them, they pay attention to market structure. For me, that's not the case. I don't care about market structure at all when I'm selecting the, the best point of interest, but I care about market structure to know if the, the point of interest I selected is aligned with market structure. Maybe I select the point of interest to buy, but the market structure is bearish. So I know that this point of interest probably won't get, you know, respected. Price will swap and get the liquidity up below these lows or below uh, or above the highs and then drop. As you saw, let me actually go back a little bit. As you guys saw, I didn't pay attention to what was happening in this level. I didn't select this has a point of interest and then waited to the price to give me an entry confirmation right here. I didn't get it about at all. But I knew that after we set the liquidity on those highs right here and didn't respect this point of interest right here, we catch the liquidity on those highs. So if the same thing happened here, we probably will go lower, we'll go bearish because price grabbed the liquidity. And that's exactly what I showed to you guys at the beginning of the lesson, right? A lot of you guys are getting set by one, two, three pips. But the thing is, when you're trading daily cycle trading strategy, 
you are aware of the situation. You know why the situation happened and ha how to take advantage of it. And this is a clear example. I am sure that many smart money concept traders supply and demand or block ICT traders, they got stopped exactly right here. But I did it. I actually was waiting for the price to set liquidity, then to take my entry to grab your stop loss. Because as you guys know, your stop loss, stop loss of most part of the traders is actually the take profit of big players like institution, IFC, you know. So this is a clear example of how they manipulate the market, take your money, stop loss you, and make their money. And I'm able also to take advantage of this move and make my money in the way. So this is a clear example. That's why I'm telling you guys, not always I'm caring about market structure, okay? Not always I'm caring about market structure when I'm looking for trades, not always. I want to pay attention to market structure after selecting the point of interest I want to take my trade because I want to see if it's aligned with market structure. But market structure alone won't make any difference in how I select the point of interest actually, okay? So let's go and let me tell you guys the rules you need to follow in order to select the best point of interest. Here, you need to see liquidity grab, okay? Liquidity grab is important. Very, very important. Liquidity grab, uh, stop hunt, whatever you want to call it. But how to see or what, how to know if we had a liquidity grab or a stop hunt? This is another thing that you guys me will probably ask yourself right now, okay? And I know we are talking about select the best point of interest right now, but to understand how to select the best point of interest, to understand the rules, we need to understand liquidity grab and stop hunt. And to understand liquidity grab and stop hunt, to understand also point of interest rules and know how to select the best point of interest and validate them, we need to understand a little bit now about the rule and how, where are the zones of internal and external liquidity. So to understand liquidity grab and stop loss hunts or stop loss hunts, that we need to understand point of interest selection and then to validate and select a point of interest, right? We need to understand right now a little bit about volume, okay? And I'm not, I'm not talking about volume profile, I'm talking just about volumes. And one common error mistake a lot of traders do is that they check volume or they see volume has an indicator. And it's not, it's not at all. Volume is just a thing that is happening on the market beside you paying attention to it or not, but it's very important to understand how much money is going through the market, is moving in the market at this exact time. So I'm, I'm able right now to tell you that this push to the downside was a liquidity grab. Why? Because I can see clearly right here that the volume increased. I'm able to tell you right now that this move to the downside was also a liquidity grab. Why? Because we can see clearly the volume increasing. Volume was going down right here, as we can see, and then boom, we have increasing. Volume right here was, you know, a little bit, it was on average, but here we can see clearly it's increasing. Another common mistake also when traders are paying attention or reading the volume indicator or pool, whatever. I don't want to call it indicator because it's not an indicator, right? I don't believe it's an indicator, actually. Maybe you believe, but I don't believe it. So another common mistake is thinking that, okay, here we have uh, red volume, so we have bearish volume, so it's sellers. No, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Actually, if you are, if you want to pay attention to what's happening on volume, I recommend you to change your volume to just one color. So let me put it like gray right here and gray also. So you don't make this, you know, don't have this misconception. I don't care about moving average on volume. I don't care about it, okay? Just don't make any difference to me, but I want to see if volume is increasing or uh, decreasing, if it's increasing rapidly, if it's decreasing rapidly, and to understand in, with this information, I can understand if you had a volume, uh, a liquidity grab or stop hunt or not. So let me, you know, do a general introduction about this again. Talk about this again in bullet points so you guys can understand it quickly. When you are paying attention on volume, we want to see one increasing rapidly on volume after price take out a low or a high. And with that, we know that we had a lot of money coming through the market. And with this money, just one thing can be happening. Okay. Just one thing will happen on the next moves, liquidity grab or liquidity or, or stop hunt, stop loss traders. Traders are getting stopped. 
why institutions are dumping this huge amount of money on the market as then we take a low. Why? We take a low price con should continue going lower. But actually, as you can see clearly right here, the trend reverses it. Price even respected this demand level. Why it should respect this supply, right? But it didn't. Why? Because we grabbed liquidity at these lows. That's one thing daily cycle traders, every single student I had, I teach them, you know. Smart money concept trader, ICT traders, they are paying too much attention to structure in this way. Like, yeah, pay attention to this. They see price decreasing or becoming bullish in the trend. Then uh, bearish on the trend, then bullish on the trend, then bearish again, then bullish again. And they are waiting always price to come to this demand level so they can take the entry. Bro, that's one of the biggest mistakes you can do. Most part of the time, what will actually happen is you will see this happening and then price will go up. That's why daily cycle traders like me, we pay attention actually to break of market structure to the up or to the downside. And then we look for entries at those levels right here. So here we are looking for a sell entry and exactly right here, we are doing a long entry, short entry, long entry. You see it's different. It's making me and my account, my profits account, having above average results. Cause all smart money concept trader, ICT, supply and demand, order block, they are all doing the same thing with one or another difference, but not something big. If you understand supply and demand, you will also understand how ICT trades and also understand how other block traders trade. But I'm doing something so different than them that I'm actually having a different result for a above average cause when they got stopped it is when I'm looking for take my entries. And this is a clear example of it, okay? So this is how you can easily identify stop loss hunt. I have other models also. I have another examples or templates, whatever you want to call it, of how you can identify levels of stop hunt or liquidity grab. But unfortunately, if I start talk all those models here, this lesson we have like 10 big directions. So it's not, I'm not just able to, it's human impossible to do this in one single lesson, okay? But this is a, the most common example. We have, for example, the sessions, example, Asia, London, and New York, Asia high, Asia low, uh, London high, London low, London previous high, London previous low, New York previous high, New York previous low, and the 50% of sessions. We have a lot of other examples, a lot of other templates, but unfortunately, I can't talk about all of them in this lesson. It will be just impossible to talk about it, okay? But now that you guys already understood about equity grab and stop hunt, we need to talk about what? The following, imbalancing, imbalancing, or some people call it fair value gap, or just FVG, okay? So imbalancing fair or fair value gap is another thing that you need to pay attention to it when you are selecting a point of interest. But this is actually when you are validating a point of interest to take your entry from, okay? So let me show you guys some, some interesting things. We need to talk about the history or why imbalances or fair value gap happens on the market. And the reason is simple. When you have a lot of orders on just one side of the market and the other side isn't able to fill all orders to catch up the other side of the market, we have imbalance happening. So if you have a lot of sellers coming to the market, so exactly right here, we have like thousand lots or thousand contracts on the sell side. And we have 50 or 500 contracts on the other side, on the buyer side, we will have a sell, a, a bearish imbalance, okay? So price will decrease without having enough time and volume and money to catch up and fill all the orders on this side of the market. So buyers, a lot of buyers, less sellers, we have imbalance. We have bullish imbalance. A lot of sellers, not too much buyers, we have bearish imbalance on the other side of the market, okay? So when we have this sell imbalance right here, let me centralize this. When we have this bearish imbalance right here, what actually happened is that we have so much sales coming to the market, so many institutions selling that buyers wasn't able to catch up, okay? So if buyers catch up or sellers, what happened? What happens is that you will see something, uh, let me see. If I have a clear, yeah, you will see something like this. So 
this right here was an imbalance, but sellers was able to catch up on buyers that made this push to the upside. So buyers, uh, we have sellers, we have buyers, we have sellers, then buyers make this huge move to the upside and sellers weren't, wasn't able to catch up on buyers and fill this gap that was left exactly right here in the market. And then sellers was able to catch up on buyers so they fill in this order and then what buyer did, buyer was able to defend their position on this level again and then we see price moving sideways a little bit, consolidating a little bit with a little bit of indecision or absorption if you prefer to call it this way because that's what the daily cycle trading strategy did teach us and with that, we are able actually to mitigate the point of interest again, catch the liquidity that was resting below this low right here. Yes, this low right here that sellers leave it behind. And then we can see clearly the price moving up. So here we have buy sellers catching up on, 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 on buyers and keep keeping the track of the market. Okay. When it don't happen, we have things like this. Price is moving down and never coming, doing a, a healthy pullback to, you know, mitigate this level right here. So when we are selecting a point of interest, we want to see imbalance because imbalance is showing to us that one side of the market was way more stronger than the other side of the market at a given moment or time or price level. And with that information, we can presume that if the market do a pullback to the same level again, the side of the market that was stronger when market was at that determinate level will defend near position. So if you have a lot of seller here, price drop it and then made a pullback and buyers are trying to suppress sellers and win this fight, sellers will be more heavy and more convicted that they need to defend their position in this price, okay? So that's, that's what we saw happening right here. But unfortunately, for some reason, um, price actually ended up sitting right here. And we saw with this buy with imbalance, actually buyers was able to win this fight here again. And then sellers didn't have enough, you know, strength to defend their position right here. I said for some reason this happening, but actually the reason I would told you guys the reason minutes ago, that was this liquidity grab that we saw when we confirmated the volume, as we can see clearly right here also, okay? So yeah, this is clearly one example of why you should always pay attention to imbalances when you are validating your point of interest. And if you pay attention, I did the same thing here, right? Look what happened here. What I did, I selected this point of interest. Why? Because we have clearly here this imbalance validating my point of interest. As you can see clearly here, price tapped exactly on my imbalance, filled the imbalance validating and showing to me that, okay, in this position, sellers will defend their position and they defend it with, you know, a lot of angry actually and price time to drop it very, very, very fast. It's clearly for us right here, why this thing happening right now, happening, right? So now you guys know that to select a efficient, efficient point of interest and validate it, we need to have liquidity grab or stop hunt and then imbalance or fair value gap. It's clear, it's easy to understand, okay? So with those two things, you are able right now to understand how you can select and validate the best point of interest. But do you guys remember what I said in the beginning? Market structure isn't a crucial thing when I'm selecting a point of interest, but after I select my point of interest, I want to check if it's aligned with the market structure. But again, we have to, you know, open the parentheses again, I need to tell you guys that sometimes if you saw a liquidity grab, liquidity grab concept will be in front of market structure. So if market structure is bearish, but we saw a liquidity grab that is pushing the market upwards or in a bullish trend, skip market structure and pay attention to the liquidity grab. So instead, pay attention to market structure. So you need to pay, uh, have attention, right? Sorry, let me put the caption here, attention to market structure. More important than market structure is a liquidity grab, okay? So I could actually just say, just put this right here, right? So this, so you need to pay more attention to the liquidity grab or stop hunt than market structure. If you didn't have any liquidity grab or stop hunt, 
pay attention to market structure. If you had any, pay attention uh, uh, to liquidity grab or stop hand. And with those easy steps, you can quickly and easily understand how to select and validate the best point of interest to take your trades. Leave a comment about this section. I want to have your guys, you know, feedback about this little session of the, this huge master class. If you guys like it, rules, like it, examples, or if you, if you have something that I can actually improve. Okay. So let's talk now about supply and demand level. Supply and demand level is easy. Okay. Let's just talk about it. You know, why I was recording this huge masterclass for you guys with all my knowledge and experience from my training journey since 2015 for you guys, something grabbed my attention. Probably most of you guys that are watching this masterclass right now are beginner traders or you are just a trader that can't make enough money from the market. You may be are trading right now, but you are losing money, failing prop film challenges and all lot of, you know, bad things that happen when you are a beginner. It happens to everybody. It happens to the best. It even happened to me when I was starting my trading journey back in 2015. So probably if you are starting your trading journey right now, the same thing is happening to you. And you know what came to my mind to record another video to show to you that's possible actually to make money from the market. So in the description of this video, there is a link to my best video ever. A video where I show to you guys for free, the most beginner friendly trading strategy for every single trader, designed specifically for every trader that isn't able to make money from the market yet. Cause you will be able to do it after watch the video, okay? It's the fifth link in the description and you need to watch that video. In that video, I showed you the same strategy that made possible to me right now. Let me show to you what I have on my table right now. Right now, I have right here this. I know you probably don't know this currency, but it's evil. Okay. I live in Europe, so I actually withdraw the money because I want to buy a new property. That's why this money is right here. Okay. I have right here one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. I have 10. By the way, small, very good. And the strategy I'm going to teach you in this video or my best video ever is the same strategy that allowed me to be able to do those type of things. Okay. Everything I conquered in my life till these days, I used it, this strategy. It's called the daily cycle strategy, by the way. The daily cycle trading strategy. Let me show you a little bit of my best video ever. Remember, the first link on the description is the link to the video so you can watch it all. Watch this one minute and you will understand why this video is my best video ever. In this table, I have the money of one of you guys that are watching these videos right now. And I'm going to show to you how I got it and how you can get it back. But you have to watch this video till the end because there is a twist that will blow your mind. Do you really think that Mekad or Eversight or even moving average can make you rich? Making money in the market is simple and easy. Shut patterns are useless. Smart money concepts are no sense. And support and resistance is fiction. What if I told you there is a proven forex strategy exclusively designed for beginners? I know you are tired of constantly losing money and failing prop film challenge. So get ready and discover the best forex strategy exclusively designed for beginners and unprofitable traders. Yes, especially tailored for young traders like you who are desperate to make money. If you want to so the same strategy I will teach you in that video is the same strategy a lot of people use it to make it on the market. People like Jake. Jake was just an average guy and he conquered a lot of things in his life. And one of my best traders ever, best students ever, Bear. He made over $90,000 from FPMO and even using the daily cycle trading strategy, the strategy I will teach you on the video that is on the first link in the description, he used this strategy to become the top one FTMO trader in 2023. I don't remember the month, but you are probably watch the image or the video shown and proving to you this right now. 
With that said, let's continue this masterclass. Well, payroll selection is a valuable skill that allows you to spot the crucial levels that influence the market movement and reaction. These levels often coincide with another concept called supply and demand level. Supply and demand levels are results on a chart where the price reverses or stales due to more sellers or buyers. They are based on the economic principle or market principle, price action principle of supply and demand, which determines the price of a commodity or an asset in the market. Supply levels are areas of resistance where the price drops due to more sellers. Demand levels are areas of support where the price rises due to more buyers. They are followed by sharp price movements that create imbalances in the market, followed by small consolidation or gaps. Traders use them to find a reversal and continuation points and to set their order. They are dynamic and change over time with the market condition. Let's see how these concepts apply in action. So, as I said, supply and demand levels are like support and resistance levels. But this is just one analogy, right? I don't mean by, by saying that, that supply and demand levels are the same thing like support and resistance levels. Not at all. It's just one analogy so new traders, beginner traders can understand what I'm talking about uh, more easily and, you know, just fix this in their mind. And by the way, I believe, I strongly believe that support and resistance trading strategy just don't work. You know, and it's easy to call, to prove that. Show to me one support and resistance trader that is able to show to you guys his overall payout in any prop firm or a withdrawal he had from his, his broker or he, a, a strapped from his bank account or a, you know, something that can actually show that he's profitable and he's making money using the strategy he says he's using. And I'm, I, I'm 100% sure none of them will do that because they just aren't profitable. They are just showing you guys something that uh, you guys may believe it worked, but it don't. No, just don't. And you probably are, are asking the same thing. Edney, can you do the same thing? Can you prove to us that your strategy work? I actually printed every single, uh, not every single, but a bunch of uh, um, teams a bunch of proofs of payouts I received from my prop firms, a bank statement, all those things, because people start to asking me about those proofs. And I say, okay, you know, I will show to them that I actually make money from this thing because they truly believe that I was like just saying things I don't know on YouTube and I don't have a way to sustain what I was talking about. And it's you. Everything is right here on those papers. I printed everything, you know. And that right here, you have, look, from two Forex funds, a 10 grand payout when I reach at expert level on two Forex funds. And you guys can see the date right here also. Okay, wait, it will focus on my face if I'm here, but you guys can see clearly the date right here and the name also, okay? I have all the payouts. This, for example, is from E8 Prop Firm, okay? It's founding. It's another Prop Firm you guys probably know also. It's a very popular prop firm, trusted prop firm, by the way, but they have high spread. So I, I won't recommend it for a beginner trade because they have been for high spread. This one is from August 2022, a 17 grand payout from two Forex funds, okay? It's the same prop firm, but they did like a rebrand in, in 2023. That's why we have different payouts in yeah, different years. I have other payouts also, of course, Exactly right here, we have uh, we have also payouts from two uh, from FTM, all the best and the biggest prop firm ever. The first one, actually, I believe, I have payouts also for the founder trader prop firm, as you guys can see right here. It's like a 12 grand payout and many, many others. But the most important, actually, that I need to share to you guys is this we extract withdrawal from um, IC Markets, my IC Markets live account, okay? I don't know if it will be able to focus on this text because I have this huge light on my right side right here. So probably it's reflecting too much on the on the text. Let me just click and see if it can focus 
Yeah, probably yes. Probably you guys are able to see it right now. So this huge payout, this massive payout, 147,000 euros payout from IC markets, okay? So if I'm telling you this, you this is because I truly believe that support for resistance trading strategy don't work. Why I'm saying that? Because any, no, no a lot of traders that say they trade support and resistance can prove to you that they actually are able to make money from the market. And besides of that, my, my personal experience said to me that it's just not impossible because they try it. What do you think? Which strategy I tried first? No, I am losing market since 2015. So what do you think? The first strategy I tried was short pattern trading strategy. It didn't work it for me. The second one, what do you think? Support a resistant trading strategy. And I tried supporting resistance with a lot of coffees. RSI, moving average, weekend, uh, stochastic, net, prof, not, net volume indicator. I tried everything, bro, everything. And it never worked, it just never worked. I just spent too much money a lot of money, actually over five grand on course from random guys that just never give me any type of result till I discovered the daily cycle trading strategy. And you know, it's the only thing that actually started to make me money. All those payouts you're seeing right here, they come from just one source, just one source, the daily cycle trading strategy. But yeah, let's talk about supply and demand levels because they are uh, very important to understand and I'm not saying that we have like right now a lack of this type of knowledge on YouTube. So I truly believe right now I'm recording something that can be watched in like 100 years from now. I will die and people still, we're still watching my videos and learning my concept. And this will be like, you know, when I become a star, I will be like, okay, these guys are taking advantage of something I recorded like in 2020, 23, and they are learning how to change their life and making money, okay? So to understand supply and demand levels, we actually don't even need to go to the chart at first. The first thing we need to do is to understand how these levels work, those levels work, okay? So let's start first with supply, okay? So supply levels. We need to understand that the market, it works on moves or on waves. Right, the market moves on waves. So the first wave, we, if we are talking about supply, will be a down wave or a down push, a down movement, a down impulse, right? So we can have impulse and pullback, move and retraction, whatever. We have this huge impulse to the downside and then this retracement. So we have, we completed a wave, right? So the wave, it goes to the beach, to the sand, and then it come back to the sea again, right? So that's the same concept we're applying here. We have this impulse and then we have this crisp. And then we will push to the downside again, another wave, another impulse, and then another retracement, right? Another impulse, another retracement, another impulse, another retracement, another impulse, another retracement, and life goes on. No things just goes in, goes and goes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It never ends. Till the end of the days, this concept will still exist. Since the conception of the markets, so when we are talking about waves and how this is uh, related or correlated with supply levels, supply levels are normally on the extreme of each wave, okay? So in this move to the downside, we have this extreme right here. So I'm telling you that supply level is normally on average, it's on the extreme, but not all the time. Sometimes it may not be in the stream, okay? In this example, in this explanation, let's just use the, the extreme has uh, the standard, okay? So exactly right here, we have a supply level. Exactly right here, we have another supply level. Very soon, you guys will see that when we go to the chart, things start to become a little bit tricky. And to understand how to identify supply level, we need to understand also market structure, okay? And I will just tell you guys an advantage that the way I read market structure is just different from any other way you guys probably learned till now. So right here, we have another supply level. Right here on the extreme, we have another supply level. Right here on an extreme, we have another supply level. So those are the supply levels of this move of those waves of the market. How do you guys supply levels can be on the extreme, but not all the times they are on extreme of a movement. Sometimes they are on the middle. 
because the extreme was already mitigated. So if the extreme of the movement was already mitigated before the movement reached or break the, the previous low, uh, in this scenario, of course, we are talking about supply, so it's the previous low. So if before the price break the previous low, the market was already able to mitigate the extreme of movement, probably the supply level won't be there anymore. So forget about the extreme. If before price break down the previous low, we mitigated the R level already. What I'm saying, right? In this scenario, has it to you guys, we have level supply levels on the extreme. But in the other scenario, I'm telling you guys, the market still moves in, way, or in waves because it always moves in waves. But right now, what's happening is that, let's say price start to drop, price retreated, mitigate this level before actually break this low, and then price dropping. Now we know that this is not our supply level anymore. Our supply level maybe is right here. Or let me just draw a better example, an even better example. We have this push to the upside, to the downside, sorry. We have this push to the upside. Price mitigated this level. Price retreated, mitigated on the level and then drop it. So we know our supply level are probably right here, right now. So instead of selecting this area right here, we will select this area right here and then expect price to drop and break the previous low again. So we have the break right here. We need another, another break as I can right here. So I know right now that my supply level on this scenario was right here, but till before we break this low right here, we mitigated those extreme level as at right here and right here. So I'm expecting right now that price will respect this supply level. Okay. And then we look for entry trigger confirmation. But in this scenario, as you guys can see, it was way more easy to, to say to, te to teach you guys, to show to you guys how price sometimes instead of mitigating the extreme, it will mitigate just the middle of the range or even some things that was left on the middle or on the on on the on this huge push to the downside, something that was left behind, but we reduce to mitigate it instead of go till the extreme of the range. When we are talking about demand, it's the same thing, but just you know, inverted. So demand on demand levels, price are moving on impulse and also on pullback or on bullish move and then bearish retracement. It's the same thing, but you know, on the bullish trend line. So we have demand levels on those extremes. So right here we have a demand level. Right here we have another demand level. Same thing right here. And right here, we also have a demand level that wasn't mitigated yet. So we are expecting price to retreat to this level so we can catch our trade and follow the move to the upside, okay? Of course, we have some variation of these things because even on the bearish or on the bullish side, because we always tend to think that market will move on this condition, but it won't. It's way more tricky than that, way more tricky. This is just the concept. And the concept, of course, it's always perfect, right? When you go to, to do whatever you want to do, they never tell you, if you just study about it on the concept, you probably are just a 10 on the concept, but on the practice, it's just another thing, another history, another concept. It, it don't even, sometimes it don't even, it's correlated, you know? You see, but you say it on the, on the, on the concept within this way, but on the practice, it's totally different because it's a practice. Sometimes the structure will be the, the, the supply level and the structure will be so messed up that it's just better to don't even do anything. Just let the market alone and do something else. But most part of the time, you will find structure like this. Something that will take a lot of time and then do this like this and then broke and then, you know, retreat and then do this, so retreat again, maybe retreat again and then broke. You just need to pay attention to what's high, what's low. I'm telling, yes, I'm, I'm talking about structure cause Ultimately, on the extremes of structure, you will find your supply or demand levels. Of course, we have the exception that is when those extreme was already mitigated and already showed the eyes on this lesson, right? So this is not a high. This can be a high because we, we never broke here. So we actually have our high right here. But our low isn't here. Our low is still here. You know, it's a little bit tricky when we go to the practice. But of course, 
on this huge masterclass, we will also talk about market structure. Market structure actually is our next summary. But now let me show to you guys an example of a bullish demand level, bullish trend with the demand level that already mitigated the extreme, you know, and instead of selecting the extreme as the demand level, we need to select something else that is this scenario right here. So we mitigated right here. I, I like to use blue to demand, okay? So right here also, let's say we selected something here, we have demand level also. And then as you guys can see, we have demand level here. We have demand level exactly right here and demand level exactly right here. So those levels, those levels right here was already mitigated, the yield was already mitigated. So our demand level is exactly right here right now. So we are expecting price actually to drop and tap on this level and then go up again. But as I said to you guys, we don't say go, this thing, you know, can be way more tricky than that. And we will learn about it, market structure, that is our next summary. So let's go start to talk about market structure right now. Well, supply so demand level, how we saw minutes ago, indicate where the market is likely to change. They also represent the underlying market structure, which is another key concept that we will explore right now. Market structure is the behavior condition, okay? So the market structure is the behavior condition in the current flow of the market. It highlights support and resistance levels, swing highs and swing low. A trend will simply a consistent direction of the price movement over time. This is very important. It's a very important concept, market structure. That's why in this lesson probably will take more time than ever Let's go to my chart. Let me show you guys how to identify and use market structure with people. So market structure. Let's talk about market structure and how I personally read and I personally believe the, is the best way to read market structure in the correct way actually to read market structure. In my opinion, any other way to read market structure is wrong. It's wrong by definition because it's too subjective. And I'm sure that if you learn to read market structure for someone else, you also have this problem where sometimes you just can't understand what market is doing. Again, because the way you read market structure, the way you learn it, how to read market structure is too subjective, okay? So let's end with this subjectivity and let's see a real way, a way that actually works on how to read market structure okay so we have nasdaq right here and we will use nasdaq as our in our example to show to you to teach you guys how to read market structure okay we will use this huge range right here in our example and we use it to read structure inside this huge range of course we have a lot of structure inside the range inside this huge range and we will use it in our example okay so when I'm reading market structure, first we need to go to a white space, to a black space, to an empty space, so I can teach you guys the concept, okay? Market structure, when I'm reading market structure, I pay a lot of attention to what is happening with the candles. So let's say I have this candle, okay? This candle is the candle that made the mean value of a whole movement to the downside. This candle right here is the candle that made the mean value of a whole movement to the downside. What I mean by that? I mean that this candle is, for example, this candle right here, okay? It's the candle, it's this candle right here. This, you know, this candle right here, the candle that made the mean value of this movement, you know, size price made this push to the upside, push to push the downside, push to the upside again, and then this push to the downside, this candle was the candle that made the mean value of this whole movement, right? But we need to pay attention uh, to have to be very careful with that because structure is always evolving, right? Structure don't happen like, okay, now we have the mean value. You know, we have this candle right here that made the mean value now, this right here, but then market move a little bit and we have another candle that made the mean value that is this one right now, then another candle that made the mean value that is this one, then this one right here, then another one came. Then we have this, we had this, we had this. So we need to always follow the candle that is making the mean value to see one thing and just one thing. 
what is this thing? Let me show it to you guys. Let me clean all of this. Let me get out of replay mode. And then we can come here again. The thing you're looking for when we identify the menu candle that made the menu value is the following. The next candle after the candle that made the menu's value, it was able to close above the max value, the candle that made the menu value made. I know this is complicated to understand at first, okay? But let me show it to you guys on the chart. So this candle made the menu value. I showed you guys minutes ago on the chart. So we want to see if the next candle, so the next candle, the next candle, the next candle was born, let's say here. So this is our next candle, I will put it in red. We want to see if the next candle was able to close its body, the body, not the wick, the body above the max value, above the max value, above the max value. So next candle need to close the body above the max value of the candle that made the menu value of the whole movement. So this candle need to close above of the week, need to close its body above the week, the candle that made the menu value that is this candle right here. So this candle need to close its body, the body above the max value of the candle that made the menu value of the whole movement. So this is what we are looking for. So we are looking for the next candle to close its body above the max value of the candle that made the menu value of the whole movement. You may ask right now, okay, if this don't happen, so if the candle isn't able to close above, the body above, it's, it closes right here, what happens? Nothing. We continue to watch the movement. But let's say this candle, before it, this movement, it, it made this week right here. The week of this candle was able to break, to make a new menu value. So the candle that made the mini value isn't this one right, right here anymore. It's this one. So instead of taking consideration this, we pay attention to this and see what happened on the next candle. Okay? And if this candle isn't able to close the body above the max value and isn't able also to make a, menu, a, a new minimum value of the whole movement. So let's say this candle, uh, the, the week of the candle was here. What we do? We don't do anything. We wait for the next candle. Okay, we wait for the next candle to continue to see if it can close its body above the max value of the candle that made the menu value of the, the movement, the whole movement, without breaking the menu value of the whole movement. So what I'm saying again, let me draw it. Okay, so I can draw it so you guys can understand. So the next candle that will come needed to do the following. It needed to do or break above the max value of the candle that made the menu value of the whole movement that still this right here because this wasn't able or it, it, it need to do this and without doing this because if it do this thing right here now the candle that made the menu value isn't this one right here it's this one so we need to pay attention now taking consideration this candle right here this is our anchor this is the candle we, it's it's our you know the candle we are paying attention to it. It's our anchor. It's the, the candle that we fix our attention to validate other candles. But why I'm explaining this to you guys? Because this is how I validate lows and highs. So in this example, I showed to you guys how to validate the low. So let's go to the chart. I will show to you guys this is how I validate the low. Because if this candle is able to close. Let's say this did never happen yet. So the menu value is still here. And it was able to close its body above the max value of the candle that made the menu value of the whole movement. Now I have a confirmed low. Okay? So let's go to the chart. And you probably are asking yourself, oh, wait, this, this probably happened too much on the chart. No, it don't. Believe me, it don't. So let's say we have this right here. Let me mark the high and low again. So we have this low right here, we have this high, we have this low, then we have this high. So how do I know if we confirm it the low right here? I will always pay attention to the candle that is making the menu value of the movement to see if the next candle is able to do what? 
to close its body above the max value, the canon that made the mean value of the whole movement did. Okay? So in this scenario, what's the canon that made the mean value of this whole movement? The movement, you know, is moving to the upside, then we are dropping. So we broke strength right here. Which candle made the mean value of this whole movement on the downside? Right now, it's this candle over here, right? So where is the max value of this candle? The max value is right here, and it's weak. Let me do it right here, and let me use a dot line. And zoom the best so you guys can see. So the next candle, this candle right here, it was able, it made a new mean value to the movement, it added a new mean value to the movement, as we can see, no, right? That never happened. It was able also to close its body above the max value of the candle that made the mean value of the whole movement. Again, no. So we move to the next candle. This next candle was able to make a new mean value or add a new mean value to the whole movement. Yes, it's click right here that it made a new mean value. So it broke. So this is the reference candle right now. So we need to pay attention to it, okay? And at the same time, this, this max value isn't, you know, the one we pay attention to it anymore. It's not our anchor anymore. We need to pay attention to this max value. So the, the following candle was able to close its body, the body of the candle above the max value of the candle that made the, the mean value of the whole movement. Um, in this scenario, as we can see, no. It was able to also make add a new mini value to the movement again. No. So we continue to watch the following candle. The following candle was able to add a new mini value to the whole movement. No. It was able to close its body above the max value of the candle that added a new mini value to the whole movement. No. So we continue to watch the next candle, okay? So we click. Let's see the next candle. The next candle. It was able to close its body above the max price of the candle that made the mini value of the whole movement. No, but it was able to add a new mini value to the whole movement. And as we can see right here, as we can see right here, yes, it added a new mini value to the whole movement exactly right here. So this is our anchor right now. This is the candle we are paying attention to it. So we need to mark its max value right now, its mini value. And we know the mini value of the whole movement is right here right now. Right? So let's see the next candle. The next candle was able to close its body above the max value of the candle that made the mean, mean, the, the mean value of the whole movement. No. It was able to add a new mean value to the whole movement. No. I'm repeating this again and again and again because I know I have, you know, a lot of students and they all have a huge difficult to understand the way of instruction. That's why I'm doing this, you know, step by step, very careful talking very slowly so you guys can understand the best and at the end of the day you can just replay the video and watch this part again okay so this the following candle wasn't able to close its body above this it wasn't able to add a new mini value and the following candle wasn't able to add to close its body above the max value but it was able to add a new mini value to the movement so we came right here and mark it now let's move on Next candle. The next candle was able to add, okay, I did what just this right here also because it's not, this is our uh, anchor candle right now, right? The next candle wasn't able to add either a new mini value or close its body above the max value. So we move on and we can see this candle purely add a new mini value without closing its body above the max value of the candle. So what we do, we pay attention to it, right? So we have our mini value right here right now. It move it. This is the candle we need to pay attention to it. And let's next see. Let's see what next candle do. Let's click the next candle. We didn't close its body above, but it was able to add a new mini value to the whole movement. So that's what we pay attention to it right now. And right here, that's the candle, the reference candle, right? That's our point of reference right now, our anchor. And let's see what happens on the next candle. The next candle was able to add a new mini value to the whole movement. It was, and let's can see right here. It was able to add a new mini value to the whole movement. And as we can see, 
it was also able to add to close its body above the price right here, okay? But in this scenario, what we actually need to pay attention to it was this candle was able to close its, bo its body above the max value of the candle, but it was, it was also able to, to add a new meaning value to the whole movement. In this scenario, you need to ask yourself, what happened first? So to understand this, you need to understand also how candles, candles are formed. If we have this week right here, what it means? It means that at some level, the price opened it here, we went to this level and then came back again and it was able, you know, to close that as a green candle because it opened it here and closed it above the price of it where it opened it. So what actually happened first was the candle making a new mini value. So we don't consider in this scenario because it make the max, it needed two things, then it did both things at the same time. So we consider what it did first, okay? And in this scenario, as you guys can see clearly, so we need to continue to pay attention to the next candle to see if the max value, if the next candle will be able to close its body above the max value. And if I'm not wrong, it was, right? Yes. We can see clearly here that this candle is able to close its body above the max value of the candle that made the whole movement, the whole new movement to the, the whole low to, the, to this huge movement to the, upside, to the downside we are, we, we, we are following on this example. And without making, without adding a new minimum value. So right now we have a confirmated low. So with all these, with all those things, what I was looking for, I was looking for a low for my high that is right here. Okay. So right now we have, let me adjust it. We have this high and we have this low. So this is our structure and this is how I really structure, okay? So let's follow this thing a little bit more. And of course, if we break here, we will have a shift of market structure. Let's follow this. So we, we made this shift of market structure. So if we made this shift of market structure, where is our low? Our low is clearly right here, right? The low we found minutes ago. Why we can select this has a low or this has a low. This is actually what many people call flip zone. You know, I call it, I don't call it flip zone, but I have another name for this type of candle. That is the candle that generated this move. Okay. So we have the extreme candle and we have the decisional candle. Okay. That's what I call this type of candle. We will talk about it in a minute, some minutes on forward on this lesson, okay? So my low is exactly right here. And the high, how can I confirmate the high? When do I know if a high was formatted, if a high is concluded or not? We use the same concept, but of course, searching for high. So let's go again to the white space and let me show to you guys how to do it. So this is the confirmated low example. Let's see the confirmated high example. So we have this candle, okay? Let's use the green color for it, or maybe a better color that can stand out better from the, yeah. Let's let's continue with blue, okay? Blue and green. So this candle made a high, and this candle have made also this week right here, and we made this week right here. When do I know if we confirmated a high? Confirmate a high, the following candle can't, it will, it can't, you know, it just can't make a new max value. You remember on the bearish example, it can make a new menu value to the whole movement. So in the bullish example, to confirmate a high, it can make a new max value to the whole movement. So it can't add a new max value the whole movement so it can do this for example okay it added a new max value to the movement so it can be we don't have our high we need to wait for the next candle again right so it can't add a new max value to the move to the whole movement and it need to close its body below the menu value of the whole movement of this bullish movement okay of the candle that made of our reference candle of our anchor candle that made the max value of all these things. 
I'm sure you guys are able to understand this more quickly. So instead of, you know, taking more time to understand this on the concept, let's go immediately to the chart and let me show to you guys how it works. So right here, we saw the price, when price broke structure. So price broke structure is actually right here. So what we need to do, we need to pay attention to our anchor candle. So the candle is this right here right now. So this is our max value, okay? And the mean value of it is exactly right here. So the next candle can't make a new max value and need to close its body below the mean value of the candle that made the max value of this whole movement. So let's see what the next candle did. It break a max value. So we don't have this house has our anchor candle anymore. We pay attention to this candle right now. And the next candle again can't make a new max value and need to close its body below the mean value of the candle that made the max value of this whole movement. And we click to see what happened. So the next candle, as we can see, it was able to make a new mean value, but it never ever was able to close its body below the mean value of the candle that made the max value of the whole movement. And this is important because we are looking for a candle that closed its body below the, the, the mean value of the candle that made the max value of the whole movement. And as you guys can see right here, we have this huge wick to the downside for some reason, but the candle never ever was able to close its body below the mean value of the candle that made the max value of the whole movement. So we don't have a high right here. And this candle either was able to actually make or add a new max value to the core movement. So we still with the same anchor point, with the same candle, okay? We still with the same um, reference point on this scenario. We still with it. And we check, we pay attention to the next candle and see what it do. The next candle was able to add a new max value to the whole movement. So now we pay attention to this candle. This is our reference candle right now reference point right now was it made the max value and let's see what happened to the next candle it was able to add a new max value to the whole movement without closing its body below the low of the candle that made the, the max value of the whole movement so since it made the new max value we pay attention to it this is our reference candle right now and this is our, what we pay attention to it let's see what happened on the next candle the next candle didn't add a new max value, didn't add or close its body, its body at the below the mean value of the candle that, you know, made the whole max value of the whole movement. So we pay attention to the next candle. Same thing happened, didn't, have, didn't add a new max value, it didn't close its body below the mean value of the candle that made the max value of the whole movement. So we still pay attention to the movement. The next candle, as you guys can see clearly right here, it added a new max value. So we do this, we pay attention to the max value of the candle. Subscribe and drop your like if you're liking this lesson. It's very important for me, for my YouTube channel. It don't take you even 15 seconds to do it. So do it right now. Subscribe and drop your like, okay? So let's pay attention to what happened to the next, next candle, okay? Next candle didn't need anything. It, it's just one inside the bar, okay? It's inside the bar. We didn't add anything. So, by the way, I will start to say inside the bar instead of saying, you know, the candle didn't add anything and not needed, didn't add a new max value to the whole movement, didn't include its body below the, the mean value of the candle that made uh, the max value. I will still, I will just say it's one inside the bar and you guys already know it's correlated. It's directly correlated with, you know, this whole concept, okay? So next candle, it's another inside the bar. Next candle, inside the bar again. Next candle, another inside the bar. Yeah, it, it was the right decision to change this. <laughs> Next candle, another inside the bar, another inside the bar, another inside the bar, inside the bar. You know, we have a bunch of side bar. Till this little candle right here was able to make a new max value, to add a new max value to the whole movement. So we pay attention to it right now. This is our reference candle right now. This is the candle we pay attention to it. And our max value is exactly right here. Let's see what happened in the next candle. The next candle again added a new max value without closing its body below the low of the candle that made the max value of this whole movement. Next candle 
the next candle was able to close its body below the low of the candle that made the next value of this whole movement without adding a new max value to the movement. So clearly here, we have a confirmated high. I hope you guys understood this because this is the best video I ever recorded explaining this concept like step by step, the best ever, the best ever. So here we have our high. This is our high. So from this low right here, the, from this low to this high, we have our range, okay? Of course, on the extreme, we have what? We have the demand level, as you guys already learned on the previous lesson. And in this scenario, I normally don't, don't select those zones, but I will just select it because we will talk about it too, probably on the next theme of this huge master class, that is decisional zones, okay? But just for you guys to know, this is the decisional zone, okay? So this is our range. Exactly right here, you guys are, have our range. We have a bunch of internal range liquidity. As you guys can see, a lot of internal range liquidity. And uh, why I'm saying this is our point of interest, because applying the, what we just learned, we can see clearly right here, we have the fair value gap that, what's fair value gap do? Fair value gap show to us where we had, you know, in disparity, we don't have like, uh, enough buyers, enough sellers on the other side of the market to catch up to the buyers. That's why the market rises and even this fair value gap behind, okay? And I could actually type and see if volume increased but to catch, you know, to see if this was a liquidity gram or stop hunt. But as you guys can see clearly right here, it's not a liquidity grab or stop hunt because, you know, the, li the liquidity right here was just normal liquidity, nothing. Uh, the volume was just normal volume, nothing too, you know, different from the normal. It was the average one. We can start to reach structure like on a row without me talking about all those things and go, okay, this is the candle, this is the rough cap. No, no, no. Let me just do the, the markup with you guys, the mark, or let, let me just mark all the structure with you guys and you guys will follow to see me applying this concept in practice with more, you know, speed. So right here, we have the high. So our load is here. Why? I think you guys know already, right? So this is our low. And where is our high? Our high is exactly right here. Where is our low? Our low is right here. Why not this one then? Because we, you know, as you guys can see, the structure is between this low, the previous one, and this high. So if I'm selecting this, I'm selecting actually internal range structure and not external range structure. That is what I'm paying attention to it right now, okay? This low was able to generate another low, so since I'm selecting external range structure, I can select two lows on the same point, okay? Or inside the same structure. One low is it was the last low before we have to break structure and generate a new high. That is, this right here, okay? So when price broke here, we generated this high, but it, and the candle was able to close its, its body below. So we, did, we made this new high. And then this candle made this low right here. But when we confirmated this low was exactly at this point. No, so cause, you know, structure is between this low, this low right here and this high. So I can select any other candle inside this till I see the last candle that was able to break structure. Okay. So when we broke structure, I'm now paying attention to what is happening next. So here, we made this high, we made this low, and then we broke structure again. Then we made this high, we made this low, then this high, then this low. We have another high right here, and we didn't pay any, any other low, uh, at least not yet, because, you know, price never was able to break structure again. One thing I just want to, to, to show to you guys, to you guys to pay attention to it, is that the way in structure Sometimes it's hard to understand. I totally agree with you if you say that it's hard to understand, but it's the best way, the most correct way, and it's the way that will give you more money. Believe me. You know what? Let me go to one minute time frame and let me show you a quick example that mm, it happens a lot to creative that don't read structure like me. A lot. Like, for example, this was probably a equity grab, right? Let me turn on my, yeah, clearly, as you guys can see. 
we actually have a one increase use increase on liquidity here but when we broke this low we can see clearly also the price spiking exactly right here uh, the liquidity coming above all those scanners right here but yeah one kind of thing that happened is that when you restructure on a different way than me you most part of the time will miss trades that i'm able to catch let me just search for one example here so okay exactly right here we have one example so let's say you restructure on the way other traders restructure you guys will probably wait for price from this high to this low and what you guys will just start to look for entries when price you know break structure right here or shift market structure there but on the weird structure i actually already took my trade or oh, i was already looking for entries at least i don't know if i was i would be able to catch this trade of course i wouldn't right because price actually filled this level gap a little bit as you guys can see here so i could actually take this trade like this and for me i already have had the entry trigger as i feel here while you guys are waiting price to break here then to retreat to take entry so this is a clear example of why most part of the times you guys will be left behind waiting for a certain entry that will never come back while i'm already making money along the way i'm already on the entry i'm already making money and you still waiting for the price to retreat to catch the entry that's market structure on my way of the week but you know what's also important v-shape recovery and that's exactly what we will talking next well as we saw market structure helps you comprehend the context and in the direction of the market v-shape recovery a v-shape recovery is a phenomenon in the forex market that is marked by a sharp decline in price of a currency pair or an asset and then followed by a quick and strong rebound to the previous level or high. This type of recovery is considered one of the most desirable outcomes when there is an economic crisis. And this shape recoveries differ from U-shaped recovery where the decline is more gradual and the recovery is longer or a W-shaped recovery where there is a double beat recession. Let's see this concept in action. So, V-shape recovery. We are here to talk about V-shape recovery, right? I struggled a lot to find the best example possible to teach you guys, to show to you guys um, a V-shape recovery. But I didn't find the best one, but I found one that, you know, is just enough. Okay, we can start talking with it. That is this example right here on gold, right? So, but what is a V-shape recovery? As always, let's see the concept because it's also important, right? Let me explain to you guys, draw some things, and then we can start to see it on the chart, right? So, a V-shape recovery is basically when we have a market moving sideways or not that bullish or bearish, right? We have, we have just average move, and then suddenly you will have something like this, and then something like this. So this huge dip and then this huge move to the opposite side very quickly is what we call V-shape recovery. That's why we call it V-shape recovery because it's a V. It will dive and then submerge very, very quickly, right? So that's why we call it V-shape recovery. But why this is important? I hope you are ready to hear this, okay? If you understand how to use V-shape recovery, V-shape recovery is a term. I will tell it very, very, you know, low so you can hear and don't tell anyone. V-shape recovery is a pattern that you can use to trade news. But not, of course, not when after, uh, not before the news happened, just after, okay? So you can use V-shape recovery to trade news. You can use V-shape recovery to trade news, NFP, payroll, wherever. But just, of, of course, three, three star news. And sometimes you can use also V-shape v -shape recovery to trade the opening of New York session. Because if you trade, right, if you're a trader, you know that when New York session starts, you have a huge, huge liquidity. 
and usually move on the market. So you can use V-shape recovery also to take advantage of news. So you can use V-shape recovery to take advantage. This pen is done. <laughs> of news and New York session opening. Okay, I will put just copy. So you can use V-shape recovery to take advantage of those two things. One clear example here. We have another one right here. We have another one right here. We will talk about roof all three, okay? And starting with this one, we can see clearly market moving up, then market start this beautiful downtrend, and then we can see quickly market reversing its downtrend and going up very, very, very fast. So why this is a V-shape recovery? Why I'm telling this is a V-shape recovery? Fifth, we can see price catching liquidity also at the bottom of Asia session. This is one indicate, indicator, okay? Uh, it's one of the things that we need one rule, right? We can put check and say, okay, clearly here, as I told you guys since the beginning of this masterclass, pay attention to volume, but don't pay attention to the volume on the wrong way, saying like red volume is sellers or blue volume or uh, green volume is buyers. No, pay attention to volume to see if it's increasing or decreasing. So I want you to tell me, this right here, is a volume increasing or decreasing? It's clearly decreasing. So why we have this huge push right here? Of course, this is not a liquidity grab. It's a liquidity grab, but not on, on market, right? On, on structure, market structure, that's what I, I had to say. I forgot the, the word structure. It's, not, it's a liquidity grab, but not on market structure. Because we can see clearly that we don't have any market structure, at least on one minute time frame, that this is the low. Probably this was a low on one minute time frame that generated uh, this high. And then we have this low that generated this high right here. Right? So the break of structure will shift the market structure happened exactly right here. But when we grab the liquidity on this low right here of Asia session, we can see clearly your market reversing. And if your market is reversing here with this huge spike on liquidity, on, on volume liquidity, same thing, right? We can expect a chalk. And that's the secret of V-shape recovery. If you want to understand and spot V-shape recovery, you need to understand what's a chalk and how to identify a chalk. Chalk, change of character of the price of course. So if you want to trade and make money using V-shape recovery, that is very profitable by the way. Let me just tell you this on advance. V-shape recovery is one of the patterns I make more money with. Normally when I take a trade using V-shape recovery and a chop, align it both, I will make less than 10% or 10 next on the money of my stop loss. So if I'm risking $100, I will make $1,000 in that trade. At least 1 to 10 risk reward. That's the average of the trades when I use in V-shape recovery. That's why it's so powerful. And that's why I need you know, to be very calm to give you guys this knowledge. If you want to understand how to use V-shape recovery, as I just said minutes ago, seconds ago, actually, you need to understand what's a chalk. Exactly right here, we have a chalk. And this chalk is telling me, look, pay attention, okay? We have a chalk right here. Aligned with this chalk, we have the confirmation that it's clear here that we grab a liquidity at the bottom of a session. We have the confirmation also that, let me adjust this. Beautiful right here. The volume was going down and then it suddenly increased. So we can see clearly more volume coming to the market. And then we can see this chalk. So we, I have four things confirmating to me that this is probably a V-shape recovery and I should put my money. I shouldn't risk. I should risk, right? So I need to put my money and risk. And all, everyone that take risk, they can make money. They can have the benefits of the risk. But if you don't make any risk, for sure you won't make anything also. It just is worse, right? So in this scenario, I have chalk. I have liquidity, I have um, this downtrend that showed to me that, okay, this liquidity is uncommon on this scenario. And I have this liquidity grab also at the bottom 
of London session. Align those things, I can be sure that, okay, I'm having a V-shaped recovery. So pay attention. Look to this trade, okay? Look to this beautiful trade right here. I can show to you guys a bunch of examples of V-shaped recovery. And I will do it. Look to this trade right here. Of course, I will teach you guys how to identify and how to spot chalk, what's a chalk on the chart, everything on the probably next steps of this huge masterclass, okay? So we can securely hear this, this little retracement feeling, trying to feel this very, very gap, and I could, you know, take a trade like this. And this beautiful trade was like one to five, probably one to four, I don't know. One to four point something. But I would actually wait to this trade on this value gap right here. So I probably would miss this trade. You know, this value gap right here is the one that I would probably pay attention to it. And how I told you guys, I would expect at least one to take risk and reward on this trade. So something like this, right? But in this scenario, it didn't happen. Let's see the other example. Exactly right here. Exactly right here. We can see something also interesting. But... Checking volume or liquidity, if you prefer to call it this way, I can tell you this is not a V-shaped recovery. In fact, it's just a shift of market structure, a common indicator, a common uh, end trigger confirmation, nothing uncommon, okay? So this right here, I think we actually already talked about this example and it's clearly not a V-shaped recovery. For me, it's just a shift on market structure, so nothing to talk about it. Let's move on and see the other example. This right here, this example is interesting also because we swept the low, the previous low of some session, exactly right here. We have finished, yeah, we swept the previous low of some session, exactly right here, but we have, we have chalk, sorry, we have chalk right here. I shouldn't say but, but, you know, <laughs> we have chalk exactly right here. And unfortunately, we don't have the volume showing to us something uncommon. So it's, it's very average for me in this scenario. I can't see anything that can say to me, oh, pay attention to this move because we may have a V-shaped recovery. I just can't, you know? It's normal volume, average volume in this case. And I think it's normal. It's a normal chalk also that we can use as a trigger also, but it's not a V-shaped recovery. So I can't expect like you want to tell the skill world trade. I shouldn't expect something more realistic like one to five, one to six, one to seven, maybe one to four and one to three risky war is what I should expect for this trade, okay? So let's move on. Let me try to show to you guys another, I want to show to you guys at least one more example, but the thing is also that I'm looking just for V-shaped recovery on one side of the market, on, you know, on the buying side. I should try to show to you guys some V-shaped recovery on the sell side also. So, okay, we have a bunch of volume came into a market, it's actually right here. Look, this volume, very uncommon. This is probably, yeah, this is for sure, New York sessions opening. No, I'm not sure about it anymore. It may be, maybe it's new probably news coming to the market. So we can see this huge move also. Or as I say, New York session opening, but New York session normally open for me at 2.30. So 14.30, uh, exactly right here is when New York session started for me. And you guys can see this huge move and it's uncommon also because we can see volume increasing and then decreasing, you know, when New York session uh, are, is moving. Why New York session is moving, sorry. So let me see here if we can find another V-shaped recovery so we can talk about it and understand better about this concept, okay? Right here, we have another example of a crew V-shaped recovery. As you guys can see, volume going down, suddenly the volume increased. And clearly here, we can find a chalk or a change of car of belly, if you prefer to call it this way. And this one was very, very sweet because we could see this very, very gap and then market retreated and filled it very, very good. Look how beautiful it is. And we have, we had, right, this huge trade weight of at least one to 10 risk reward exactly right here. Look how beautiful it is. 
And Houseboys can securely here also, of course, the intent, but we just grab the liquidity of London session. Okay, so we swept the low of London session with this huge push to the downside, V-shape recovery, and here we go. Beautiful, beautiful trade using this concept. So let me just resume everything again for you guys. Okay, let's go to a white space so I can resume everything for you guys again. So if you want to take trades, if you want to take trades, if you want to take trades using the shape recovery, you need to pay attention to some things. One of them is uncommon, right? Let me just correct this. Uh, v shape recovery. One of those things you need to pay attention to it is uncommon. It's not common, uncommon volume on the market. Of course, when I say uncommon volume, I'm saying um, I'm saying to that specific moment, okay? Because you know you can have hundred millions on a single candle, and it's normal in New York session. But on long session, it maybe it's not normal. You know, it's above normal. So that's what I'm saying. So if the volume is moving like this, so we have volume like this. And suddenly we see volume going like this, you have uncommon volume on the market. We had volume going down or, you know, staying on with a near resistance level. And then suddenly volume just broke it with the market grabbing the liquidity at some level. So we need to have uncommon volume. We need to have also liquidity grab on a session hike. Or low. Okay. So we need to have also a liquidity. What's this? Liquidity. Okay. Liquidity. Grab. On a session. High or low of one session. So on, on average, when this liquidity grab on a high, on a low on a, of a session happens, is when you will have a full opportunity to, to see the uncommon volume coming into the market. So I have to show put this has fields and this has the second. Okay. After all of this, we need to see what? We need to see a chalk, a change of character. So with change of character, we have the entry trigger we need to take the entry. Right? We have the the signal seen pause. Okay, it's now to it's it's time now to place your order. It's time now to risk. It's time now to enter on the market. Okay. So we want to see uncommon volume. We want to see a session losing its low or high, right? So we have market moving, market moving, and then we lost a low of a session. When we lost, when we lost this, the low of a session, let me just do the example here again. As soon as we lost the low of a session, we want to see what? We want to see an common volume. So we want to see this thing increasing, or it should be uncommon from what it was in the past minutes ago. So you want to see uncommon volume. With, after seeing uncommon volume, you want to see a chalk. I'm not saying this is a I'm not saying this is a chalk, okay? I'm just drawing so you guys can understand. You want to see chalk, I will put a CH here to, you know, you guys can see what to understand what I'm saying about, what I'm talking about. So you want to see a chalk, and after the chalk, we want to take our entry as soon as the price retreats to feel some type or some form a further gap or um, imbalance if you, if you prefer to call it this way. So this is the whole thing you need to pay attention to it if you want to trade um, using V-shape recovery. It's a very good, very, it's the best, I told you guys, it's the best thing to trigger confirmation, the best uh, sharp pattern. I don't know if, you, if I should call it this way, but it's the best thing you can use if you want to take high risk reward trades. Follow those rules and you will be good. So now that we talked about V-shape recovery, we need also to talk about inducement. And that's the summary, that's the subject we will talk about, that the, the thing we will talk about in the next part of this usual masterclass. Let's get it. A V-shape recovery shows you that the market has recovery from a temporary step back and resumed its previous trend or started a new one. It also shows you 
that there are an inducement in the market, which is a technique used by market makers to influence traders' emotions and actions. What inducement does in trading is persuade traders to enter into the market early. Then, when inducement happens, gear stops are taken out and price moves in their desired direction. The market participants were induced into making a bad decision by the market maker. Let's see this concept in action. So, let's talk about inducement. Inducement has a do with you guys is when market makers or financial institutions or banks are trying to make you do the wrong thing or take a bad decision, take a bad trade or exit from your current position too early. Okay, there is a huge habit hole on inducement. A huge, huge, huge and very deep habit hole on inducement. But I decided to don't talk about everything. Okay, because if I talk, I'll teach you guys everything about inducement. On the final of this huge masterclass of this huge, you know, part about inducement, you will probably feel like, okay, so everything is inducement. Right, that's probably what the, the 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 final thought you will have in mind, and I don't want to, you know to bring more confusion or more you know enough two things to your mind. Okay, I want to give you guys just the necessary so you guys can go to the market and try to find more by yourself. So in inducement, I will show to you guys the one example that is the most common one, and that will be you know the this. Single example, if you have at least one average IQ, you won't get in any trouble or in too much confusion. Like, okay, I see inducement here, I see inducement there, inducement everywhere. No, you will, you know, you'll be just fine. I, I have selected the sharp example of this inducement right here. I have one good example right here. We will come and I will explain to you guys this example very soon. But right now, let me just draw some example of inducement, the example of inducement, and then I can show to you guys, you know, uh, everything, you know, explain step by step while I'm drawing. So the most common type of inducement is this one. So price, uh, I will draw the bullish and bearish example. Okay, so price is bullish, price retreats. Price is bullish, price retreats. Do the shift of market structure. Price start to go up, retreats again. So this is the inducement. And then, as we saw, price will tap on the fair value gap zone, the supply zone, and then go down, okay? So this is the most common type of inducement. This right here, you guys have right now the most common type of inducement. Let me select it and push up, okay? Even push a little bit more up. So this is the most common type of inducement, this right here. But this is the bullish example, right? On a bearish example, we will have something like this. Price is bearish and we will turn in bullish, right? So price will do something like this and this. So this right here is the inducement, okay? So this type of inducement right here actually is a good type. What, what will actually happen in this type of inducement is that you will end up drawing or taking a position too early. You will join too early. You will take a good trade, but on a bad time. That's what will happen on this type of inducement. But we also have the bad type of it. That this this thing right here that we get to stop. And actually, you get a stop loss if you try to trade this type of inducement. So price will break structure. We do something like this, and yes, we stop you so you will lose money you get your loss exactly right here so what happened here the inducement is exactly right here at some level but you can see right now that here we didn't break structure okay how can you avoid this type of inducement that's what we will talk now okay let's let me go to the chart example as i showed you guys minutes ago then move right here so you can come to the short example and I show to you guys how can you guys avoid this type of inducement and you know see the difference between them to those two types okay so right here we have the good type so you will take a good trade but on a better time you will end up taking 
uh, a bad position, but on a good trade, right? So this type of inducement, it's clear what happened right here and how can you avoid this type of inducement? First thing you need to pay attention to it is where is the third fair value gap that was uh, left behind and fulfilled by the price action. So what most traders will do, they will actually pay attention to this fair value gap. You see, that's why you will take this trade wrong. That's why you will join this position too early. And you know, you, you won't get a stop loss, but let's say you are planning to get out of this position at this level right here. If you take the trade right here, you will use a huge stop loss, right? Relatively huge stop loss, something like this. And when price hit your take profit, you will make 1.7 risk reward. So, but if you take this same trade right here on the C7 gap that was left behind and fulfilled by the price action and place your stop loss at the same point, when price hit your take profit, you will make, you know, four times more. You see, you, you took the, the trade with the same, two traders, they took the trade using the same entry trader confirmation on this scenario, it is shift of market structure, but they place their trade on a different zone. One, the first trade, the first trader, he got tricked by the market makers and took his put, joined the position too early. The second one waited patiently and took the position where he should take it. He placed his order on the best point uh, possible. And you can see clearly right here what ended up happening. He made four times more in the first trader, okay? So uh, this first type of inducement, it's not, you know, a bad, because you won't get stop loss, you won't get a stop, but you won't make as much money as you could make, you know? You will have a lot of money on the table. So this type of inducement is very easy to understand. You can see clearly your price leave it behind the first favoring gap. And if you try to join your position on the first favoring gap, the odds, you know, aren't in your favor. You can quickly, quickly lose all the money. Sorry, and you can quickly, quickly left a lot of money on the table list. A one price to hit your take profit. And if you took your trade as at right here on the first terminal gap that was left unfulfilled when price started to drop on this move to the downside, you will be way, way, way better and make way more money. The second type of inducement has a show to you guys. Let me see if I can find it here. I don't know if I can find it in the second type. Yeah. I think we have the second type of inducement exactly right here. As you guys can see, we made this uh, break of market structure here. It's very tiny, but it's still, you know, a break of market structure is a break of market structure or a shift of market structure. So our low is here. Then we have uh, this high right here. Then this low, then this high, okay? So what happened here is price made this push to the upside, push to the outside, push to the upside. Retracement respected the demand level and then went up again. This is not the best example, actually. It would be better if we had a clear demand level right here, because, you know, um, of, of course, I can say to you guys that we have this candle right here, but it's not that clear. But a, an easy way to understand to see this type of, to spot and, you know, drop the mask <laughs> of this type of inducement because they are trying to trick you, is to pay attention again to the value. See what happened, what happened with the volume when price was coming down and what happened with the volume when price started to go up. You can see clearly here that this green candle have more volume than this red candle. So the bearish candle with this huge push to the downside had less money invested or traded than the bullish candle. You see, it's very, very interesting when you pay attention to volume and start to, you know, understand what's behind this, what's behind this, why this huge drop had less volume, you know, this candle moved like um, 12 pips, okay? We are on gold, that's why pips are a little bit different. But when we, we move at 12 pips right here, let's say, and with, in this huge push the downside in just one candle in one minute, but to the half of the same thing, we move at 55 pips. 55, it's not even, uh, um, sorry, we, we move at five pips, sorry. We move at five pips, it's not even half of the, uh, the other candle value, okay? And 
uh, unfortunately, this type of volume, it don't show the money that was traded. I don't know why. Let me search for another type of volume. I know there is a net volume. I don't know if that's the name. Let, let me see. Let me just try, okay? No, it's not net volume because it's opening below here. Let me show for another one. Volume. Oscillator trend, 24 hour volume session, volume on balance volume. We have a bunch of type of volume, but I think maybe it's this one or this one is the one that I'm already using. It's the one I'm already using. Uh, let me see 24 hour volume. It's not, it's not happening that much to be fair. So, but there is a volume that showed to you how much money was traded on each candle. It showed clearly. Look, in this candle, we traded like 500 grand. And next candle, we traded like a billion. It shows, you know, volume oscillator, vortex indicator, no volume. Let me see volume in oscillator. No volume. It's the same one, right? Yes, the same one. Or maybe I just need to, to you know, enable some, uh, something, some exactly right here inside this color based, no. Uh, growing, volume moving average. Uh, I don't think so. Precision, no. Uh, no. I unfortunately, guys, I can't find this type of volume, but it it will be interesting to see the difference. But I think you guys got you know you guys got uh, and understood the the general idea of this, right? It's very interesting to see how is it. A bigger move had less volume traded on it, and a short move quickly had, and, and like even not even the half of the previous candle had more volume. So, using this just this little thing, you can actually understand what's happening behind each candle. So, if in this push the downside, we traded like uh, hundred millions, and on this little push to the upside, we traded like hundred and fifty million. It means that sellers are not winning this battle. Who is actually winning this battle is the buyers. Because they traded months and they won the sellers. And as you guys can see here, the price ended up being a bullish candle instead of a bearish candle. And then price touched on this zone right here, respected in it. And we can see clearly here, if you took this entry, if you try to take this entry, let's say right here, you would get a stop loss. Beautiful stop loss, by the way. <laughs> so yeah. I hope you guys understood this part and let's start now about the liquidity that is also another important summary. Let's talk about liquidity. It's very simple, but at the same time, you need to pay a lot of attention to understand how liquidity works and to spot it. And if you understand liquidity, you can take advantage of it, of these traps the market makers do, the institutional, uh, uh, the financial institution and banks do for us, even governments, you know, central banks, they are not in our favor. But, but to be fair, not, none of those institutions are against us. We just want to make money. That's the truth, okay? When you hear like uh, institutions don't want us to make money, probably I even seen that sometimes, but that's not the point. They are not like, hey, I don't like any, let me grab stock. No, no, that's not the point. The point is they, just search, they are just searching for where are more stop loss on the market. And if most part of the people placing their stop loss on one point, guess what will happen? Exactly. They will grab all the stop loss and then take your money. Okay. So right now let's talk about uh, um, liquidity and let's see if you guys can understand this topic also. Let's go. As we saw, inducement is a way of deceiving traders into taking wrong position or exceeding profitable ones by creating false signals or movements on the chart. It is important to be aware of inducement and avoid failing for it by using proper risk management and analysis tool. Inducement also affects another concept that is called liquidity, which we will discuss last. So in the Forex market, liquidity pertains to a currency pair's ability to be bought and sold without causing a significant change in its exchange rate. A currency pair is said to have a high level of liquidity when it easily bought or sold and there is a significant amount of trading activity for that pair. Let's see this concept in action. Liquidity. Let's talk about liquidity. 
Liquidity is a concept that I believe you need a lot of experience to understand and to see on the market. Right here, I have some models, some of the most common models of liquidity, temperature, whatever you want to call it. But here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight models of liquidity. Those models are the most common ones, okay? But we have, let me actually, right now, I, while I was, I was talking with you guys, I just remembered another model. So let me add it right now. So another model that I just remembered is like something like this and then price move up a lot and then cut all the internal range liquidity and then skyrocket it again, okay? So this should be something like this and then these demands on price will tap on it and respect. I'm here to show to you guys and talk with you guys about those models of liquidity. Let me actually add here also internal range liquidity, rate, rate, rate. Now we can go, okay? So those are the most common models of liquidity. I will try to explain to you guys each one of them and the concept behind, the idea behind. Unfortunately, I will be able to show to you guys short examples of every single one of those models. I just want the able, okay? Because we have too many things right here and to search for all of these on the market, it will be very, very, very hard to find each one. But I'm sure if you are trading at some moment on your trading journey, on your trading chart, on your trading bear instrument, you will find one of those models. One of those models will appear to you and we actually have all those models, okay? But I will tell you how to generally identify illiquidity and trade is, and instead of trade against them, take advantage of this model of whatever the model is and make money. So on this fifth model, what this dollar sign is here trying to do to tell us is that basically we have liquidity on this board. And this can happen be because of two things, okay? This can happen probably because we have a fair value gap that didn't got filled when price started to retreat. So we had this push to the upside, we had this push to the downside, and then push to the upside without fill every single fair value gap that was left. Or better saying, the fifth fair value gap that was generated when prices started to move up right here. We already talked about fair value gap or imbalances, so you guys know why it's so important to price to retrace and seal fair value gap or imbalance, okay? So this is the fifth thing. So if this type of liquidity happened, this fifth type of liquidity happened, it's mainly because we had a fair value gap, right? A fair value gap or imbalance, right? that didn't got filled when price was moving like this. So we had imbalance right here. So we can consider this as a liquidity, right? The second level is one of the corners one, okay? So double top and double bottom isn't even anymore a secret that, you know, market create liquidity on those double tops or double bottoms, especially because of support and resistance traders that are, you know, a huge number of traders in the market, huge numbers of traders on this market trade support and resistance and some variation of it. So that's why double top and double bottom, they are so, you know, so common has liquidity, so common use has liquidity by market makers and institutional uh, financial institutions and banks, okay? The third one is more interesting. So the third one is actually something that started to happen in like two months ago and now it's, you know, it's very, very common. So supply and demand traders or other block traders, they use their, you know, they, they use those retraction, those pullbacks to take entries. And market started to not side to, to see that, you know, on those levels, we are getting a lot of orders, a lot of stop loss being placed on those lows. And the market is just searching for your stop loss. So exactly right here, what actually is happening is we saw market evolving and instead of respecting those levels of demand, they now create like two levels. And on the third one, it will probably, you know, set everything and catch the liquidity. And delete this and draw it again. So on the third thing, it will probably just set everything, you know, and catch all the liquidity on those lows. But to tell you guys the truth is that this thing 
is also happening because of the trend line trading strategy. Trend line traders, they want to see till touch on the trend line. So it's a trend line, right? The second touch, it become a trend line. The third touch, they will get, they will, you know, take their entry. And this thing is also happening because of the trend line trading strategy. So market makers are catching the liquidity of the trend line traders. Right now, we are seeing, you know, the first thing respecting the second, let me use the other one, the first touch respecting the demand level, the second one respecting the demand level and building also a, a trend line. So everyone will take the trade, the supply and demand of the block traders and trend line trading strategy traders, they will also take this trade and then price will come to the third touch that everyone is waiting, you know, to make money and set everybody and catch liquidity on those nodes, on this node right here. So that's why we have this symbol right there, right? When you go to the first example, you guys can see that it's very similar to the first ones. That's because from considering this, sorry, I should actually consider this has liquidity. It means that what? That we left behind a level with imbalance, without feeling all the imbalances. So that's exactly why I consider this um, liquidity and market is, you know, respecting and showing to us this type of thing right now. But actually, if you guys pay attention to it, this can also, this is inducement, you know, okay? We will talk about inducement very soon, but this is inducement and also liquidity build, okay? So this is a skill scenario. This, of course, you guys can see it's clearly double top. So we have one top right here. We have another top right here. And this is because of, you know, support and resistance trade-offs. They are placing their stop loss view and we have a lot of people trading support and resistance. Sometimes this thing right here, we also be like in a call through ways to, to lose money, call through ways to lose money with a stochastic and RSI or even MCAT indicator, okay? So those things can, you know, if you trade support and resistance with RSI, MCAT, move your average or even stochastic, you will get a lot on this type of trap, you know? You will think it's oversold, but the truth is that, no, bro, you are just taking a trade where they want you to take your trade and place a stop loss on some level so they can, you know, grab your stop loss and then drop. This right here is also very similar to this, right? So you best can quickly understand it, just, you know, market showing to us um, the supply level, supply level, trend line forming, and then you will try to take another entry when price hit the supply level. And trend line trading strategy, traders will also take the trade right here, place their stop loss at some level right here, and price will just set everybody, okay? Now we come to a more, instead of just inverting, you know, as those examples right here, like this is the buy example, this is a sell example, um, double bottom, double top, um, buy example, sell example, we will come to another example that actually changed everything, that is this one. This one is one of the examples of liquidity I traded the most. It's very, the accuracy is very good, and all the time when I take this type of trade, I make a lot of money because the risk reward is also very good. Fun fact, you can also use, use you can also use this type of, of thing to trade um, news. Yeah, actually you can trade news with this type of thing. But when trading news, you need to be more careful because sometimes what actually will end up happening is price will set to this low also and then, you know, start on it, okay? And of course I have the buy example right here, but it's easy to understand and to think about the Excel example, right? I think you guys have at least 80 of, of uh, ID to understand how to invert the model, right? How can you identify that this is liquidity, okay? First, you take your Fibonacci and drag, drop and drag, okay? We drop to this level. If this thing right here isn't able to hit, at least, if this retracement isn't able to retrace enough to hit, to come below the 20% mark, you can expect this type of retracement to be a market manipulation and price just creating liquidity to grab it later. Okay, so how can you identify this type of liquidity? Take your Fibonacci tool, drag it and drop on the first leg of the movement and see if the, the pullback was enough to actually feel at least nearly 20% of the whole movement, of the whole impulse. If, it, if it's not enough, you probably are, um, you will be seeing right now a development of a trap, 
a trap to grab some people's money. And to confirm this, you can just, you know, drag and drop this and, okay, now I know this is an equation. No, 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 no. You need one more thing. You need to see, again, a fair value gap at some level here that was left unfulfilled also, okay? So you need to have those two things, combination of those two things, and you probably are, you know, seeing right now a liquidity, a liquidity level. So when you go to your chart, search for those things, okay? Measure the fifth leg, see how the pullback came, you know, if it hit the 20%, and see if you have some type of fair value gap or imbalance on the level. So you are probably watching right now a liquidity level, okay? This right here is one of the most sophisticated, actually. As you guys can see and probably imagine, we also need to have right here fair value gap left unfulfilled to think about this thing, okay? This is the first model of liquidity and inducement theorem that the first and the only one I make public. I don't talk about the other one because, you know, I just don't want. But in this scenario, as you can see, you have a break of structure, impulse, retracement or pullback, break of structure, impulse again, retracement, and then input break of structure and use retracement that cut all, catch all the liquidity, tap on the lead zone and then skyrocket, okay? The main, the main, the thing that can catch your eyes in this type of movement first, you need to pay attention to liquidity on this low right here, okay? So if we will have this huge push to the upside and then retracement, the retracement didn't feel it, the, the whole fair value, the all fair value gap that was left behind. If you have any type of fair value gap here, just pay attention to it. And then price, you know, exploded or skyrocketed, start to increase very fast and then retraced a little, just a little, and not, it don't even touch on the 50% of this leg, okay? It can't actually. So if in this scenario, it didn't touch even 50% of the, the whole movement, you need to pay attention to it because the next move, you are, we are waiting just a, a, a huge drop on the price. So I push to the upside, push to the downside, push to the upside again, a huge drop, tap on the zone, and then you can see this huge move to the upside. This model right here, it's very interesting, very, very, very interesting. I have students actually that trade just those two models and they are crushing it on the market, crushing, crush, crushing it on the market, okay? So those two models are very, very accurate, very, very, very accurate, you know? I'm not saying that the other one isn't accurate, but those right here, when they happen, they have good accurate accuracy and they don't happen too much. They don't happen too much. Like double top and double bottom happens all the time, but those models, not all the time. And the third one that I just, I remembered why I was, I started a lesson is also very easy to understand, right? So you will have a push to the upside, imbalance was left behind, price never came back. And this will actually happen most of the time after price swept a London low or high or previous low, previous high. Of course, when I'm saying high, it's because I'm thinking, you know, on the sales example like this, you know, I'm talking about a sell example, not a buy example, if I'm, uh, if I'm telling you guys that this type of thing can happen when price set a high. A low, we have an example right here, okay? So price will be left behind a unfulfilled fervent gap or imbalance. We will see price, you know, moving up, moving up, moving up. And suddenly, even if it can even be news, okay, it can be news, price will drop, tap on the zone, and, you know, the has this history, price will just skyrocket very fast. So those are the most common models of liquidity. Those are the most common one. As you guys can see right here, we have what? We have this level right here that, as I said to you guys, we need to have imbalance right here. And this model right here, that's mainly because of uh, support and resistance traders. And this model right here that combine trend line and demand level, right? And those right here are just the inverse of those levels. This, those two right here that are the most, you know, they have the best accuracy. This one, we need to pay attention to what? To the complement of the first leg and the retracement and also fair value gap. This one, we need to pay attention to the complement of the second leg and the equity will be here because this retracement or pullback won't even be able to touch on what? To touch on the 50% um, of the retracement, okay? Of the Fibonacci. Then we will go up and then, you know, this huge retracement will happen. Then what we have, we have the third one that is just, you know, this beautiful model that can happen with news or even New York session opening. That's what I forgot to say. 
New York session opening, okay, NI opening can also cause this huge drop in price because, you know, a lot of volume will come into the market and with this huge volume, things can become lit. And with things becoming lit, you know, it's easy to see this drop and then this huge increase in price. Maybe this can also happen, okay, but mainly it's just this thing you need to pay attention to it. So those are the most common models of liquidity. We need to pay attention to it, you know. As I told you guys, those two are the most the currency one. As I said, also, I have students that trade those and they are making money, making money, serious money in the market. It's very easy to understand, very easy to learn, okay? So now we have to start to talk about what? Well, as we saw, liquidity affects how easily and quickly you can enter and exit trades. In the Forex market, it also affects how stable and predictable the price movements are for a currency pair. Liquidity can be influenced by various factors such as market hours, news events, and market makers. Liquidity also plays a role in another concept that we call entry confirmation, which we will explain now. Confirmated entry is a trading technique that helps players identify the right entry points in the Forex market. The technique involves using multiple technical indicators to confirm the direction of the market trend and the timing of the end. This is very important. So let's go to the chart and let me show to you how to use entry confirmation. Entry trigger confirmations. Let's talk about one of the most important things for every single trader that wants to become profitable. You need to refine and choose the best point of interest, of course, when you're thinking on its own to place your trade. But after selecting your point of interest, you need also to refine your entry trigger confirmation, your entry signal confirmation, the signal that when you see it, you will think like, okay, now it's time to place my buy or sell order. Doesn't matter if it's market order or limit order, but when you see the, the signal, you want to place your order. That's the last confirmation and the most important one, it's the last one. You build one, you build one history behind your trade, right? You build one idea behind the trade, watching the price action, moving the market structure, the liquidity grab, all those concepts I already teach you guys since the beginning of this huge masterclass still here. And at the end, what you need to see to take your entry is the best entry signal confirmation. Okay, I use three entry signal confirmation. The first one is the most common one. Actually, a lot of people on the smart money concept industry say this, say chalk, right? They say change of character. But they all identify change of character on the wrong way. You know why? Let me show it to you, okay? Let's go to my shop right now. I can show it to you purely here. So for most part of traders, most of traders trade smart money concept trading strategy, they strongly believe that this is a chalk. So change of character, they call this change of character of price. That's what they call this. And I mean, this is right. If they think this is, this is what they should call chalk, okay? That's what they do, you know, I don't care about it. They do, you can give it the name you want to do it, okay? It doesn't matter the name. Just one thing matter. Can you make money with it? And since this is chalk for you, the entry confirmation I call chalk, you don't trade. So I have one entry trigger confirmation that I call chalk. And it's not, it's anything, it's not, you know, it's not even close to this thing. It's more based on candles than anything else. But if for you, this is chalk, so what I call chalk, you call something else or you don't even know it at all, right? So let's start with that. What do I call chalk? And after explaining chalk, I will explain also with illustration and image and drawing everything for you guys since we, we are doing since the beginning of this use masterclass, right? And then you will go to what? To the chart and I will show to you guys a couple of examples, okay? So the first thing, we will talk on entry trigger confirmation about chalk, about shift of market structure, and also about internal break of structure. Those three things are, you know, those three entry signal confirmation are the entry signal confirmations I use to trades, and that's what I will teach you guys when this huge masterclass. So 
starting with chop. This is not chop for me. Okay, so for me, this is not chop. For me, this is just a shift on market structure. So you're probably asking yourself right now, Swedney, what is chalk for you? What stage of character on the way you trade? It's very easy to understand, but at the same time, you need to pay attention and be very focused, okay? Come with me. So the first thing, as I told you guys, chalk, the way I read it, it's more based on candles than anything else, okay? So we are paying attention to what? We are paying attention to candles, okay? And when I'm talking about chalk, there are two types of chalk, right? So I will do this like, okay, so we have two ramifications right here. So I can have what? I can have, I think it's easy to understand, bullish chalk. And I also have, of course, bearish chalk. They're very similar, but as the name suggests, one is bullish and another one is bearish. So, in size to, to understand um, bullish and bearish chalk, I need to pay attention to candles. You can, you know, make this connection and understand also that, okay, so it's probably the difference between a bearish candle and a bullish candle that may that also transform on the difference between bullish chalk and bearish chalk, okay? And you are completely right, okay? So where this different need to be, okay? Where this different need to be so I can see, okay, now I have a bullish shock and now I have a bear shock. This difference need to be on what I call, let me write it right here so you guys will see all at the same time. Sorry, the base, okay? That's what I call the base. The basement, the base, whatever, the foundation, whatever you want to call it, but it's just, you need to put a strong word so you understand that without that you can identify if it's a bullish or a bearish chalk. So the base of the chalk. If the base of the chalk is a bullish candle, we have a bullish chalk. If the base of the chalk is a bearish candle, we have a bearish chalk. And of course, if the base of the candle is bullish, we are trying to catch a long entry, right? We are trying to buy. If the base of this chalk a bearish is bearish, right? We are trying to sell. We are trying to short the instrument, the bear, the currency, whatever, right? So now let me start some draw so you guys can understand even better and we can continue, okay? So how told you guys, let's start with bullish chalk. On a bullish chalk, what I need? I need a bullish base or foundation of the chalk. So right here we have a bullish foundation, right? So let's say this is the base or I will just see the foundation okay this is the foundation of our chalk the next candle it need to be bearish candle okay so we need to do something like this it, it don't necessarily need to be bearish candle actually it just need to you know make a new mini value or add a new mini value to the whole movement and of course on most part of the time it will be bearish candle but it don't need to be bearish candle okay so let's see let's see we have something like this, okay? So it needed to add a new meaning, meaning value to the to this, you know, uh, to this movement to the downside, to this candle right here. It needs to do a new meaning value. It don't need to close below, okay? The, the, the body of the candle can be like, the candle can be like this, if no problem at all. It's not like we are confirming a low, like I teach you guys on the market structure. It can be like this or like this, doesn't matter. We just, we just need to add a new menu value. And to have a chalk, we can't never ever add a new max value. Okay, so the base of a bullish candle, of a bullish chalk, has to be a bullish candle. If we have a bullish candle, or has base of the chalk, we have a bullish chalk. So we are waiting for buy or long entries opportunities. The next candle, you need to add a new mini value to the whole movement without, you know, adding a new max value to the whole movement, especially if the candle is bearish. So this right here, we can pay attention to it and we can say, okay, this, we have probably, we are almost with a chalk. What we need to confirm it, like this is a chalk, that this is a chalk. The chalk will happen when the price is able to uh -huh. do to add a new meaning value 
just after adding a new, sorry, the chop will be right here when we add a new max value. I said mean value in, in the first uh, sentence. We need to add a new x value after adding a new minimum value to the movement, okay? To this, uh, to violate this minimum, this low right here that we made on this bullish base of the job. So this needs to happen. And then maybe, I don't know, we had another bearish candle and then a bullish candle. And then let's say another bullish candle. And then another bullish candle. And now we have a chalk, right? So the candle that break the chalk, the max value right here, it needs to close above. Remember, the, close, the candle that made this mini value don't need to close its body on a below the, the mini value, okay? But the candle, it can like this candle can be like this and no problem at all, just a week. But this candle that we break above, it needed to close above. And you will probably have like a fair value gap at some level right here. This is one example, but let's see some variation or some things that can easily happen on real market conditions. The first thing that can happen and you guys need to be aware of, let's say this candle is a bullish candle. It add a new mini value to the whole movement and it was also able to add a max value to the whole movement like this, okay? This is not a job. This is not a job. We don't have a job right here. What will happen in this situation is that instead of have this candle has the base of our um, chalk, now the base of our chalk will become this candle right here. So we transfer the base of our chalk from the previous candle to this candle right here. So let me go back so you guys can see really what I said. So if this candle that was something like, that did something like this, ended up closing above, we don't have a chalk simply cause we know we did first, because first we, you know, add the minimum value and then close it above the max value. No, this candle can't make top and bottom at the same time. Even if this candle close, let's say this candle, okay, was able to close bullish and do something like this. At the same time, we need also again to transfer our chalk to this level, okay? We need to transfer our chalk to this level because um, in this scenario, the candle that is the base of the chalk need to be the candle that, you know, set the max value of this chalk. So the base of the chalk is the candle that set the, the, the max value of all those things, okay? So let's go back again. I'm explaining this very slowly so you guys can understand, okay? I'm explaining it very, very, very slowly so you guys can understand step by step, right? So let's say, now that this happened, the following candle was able to do this. And it's a bullish candle. Do we have a chalk or not? Yes, we have. But if this happened, we don't. Because we need to transfer the base of our chalk now to this high. Okay? So this is easily how can you spot a bullish chalk. Let me go back now and show you guys the clear example. This is a bullish chalk, okay? So let's go to the chart and let's search for some example of bullish chalk so no, you guys can see it on practice or in action. Another thing I forgot to say is that you can have chalk on any time frame. Doesn't matter if it's daily, four hour, one hour, one minute, five minutes, three minutes, 15 minutes. I use a lot of 15 minute chart to identify change on, on the train even before any other signal appeared on the market, you know? But sometimes I even make money using the daily chart. Yeah, I will try to show to you guys some example if possible. But let's start with this point right here, okay? So here, as you guys can see, price was going down on the 15 minute time frame. And then we made this point right here. This right here would be the base of our chalk, if, I'm, if I was watching a 15 minute time frame, to wait for a chalk and then to search for entries. And as you guys can see, any candle was able to, you know, to add a new max value to the whole movement and, you know, close its body above this point right here. So I could, I could have like a chalk and then start to search for entries, okay? 
let me search for another chalk. Probably here we have a chalk. It happens a lot on those type of zones, on those no view known zones. So what we actually had here, have here is a shift on market structure. So it's not a chalk. So I can use it exactly right here. Look, look like we have a chalk right here, right? Look like, but we don't have cause, you know, as you guys can see, this candle was able to add a new menu, a new max value to the whole movement. And let me zoom in. As you guys can see, this candle isn't a bullish candle. And if the base of a bullish chalk need to be a bullish candle, and this is not a bullish candle, because I need to readjust my chalk, right? My chalk foundation to this candle right here. And it's not a bullish chalk. So uh, a bullish candle, it's not a bullish candle. Sorry, I said bullish chalk on the previous sentence. If it's not a bullish candle, so I don't have a bullish chalk right here. I need to follow. Follow on and move on and search for another uh, chalk opportunity. We all once had a chalk here, but as you guys can see, price, you know, drop it and never made this then push up. It actually continued to go down. So instead of having a chalk, we ended up having a shift on market structure that happened exactly right here. Okay, finally. Finally, we found something. Exactly right here, we have a bullish chalk. As you guys can see, Price drop it. So where is our structure? Just to start today, price made this low. Then we made this high. Then we made this. And then as you guys can see, we never broke like, we never came below this low, right? So our high is right here and our low is here. And then we just made a new high as up right here. That's when we broke this, right? That's our break on market structure or Actually, it's a shift on market structure. So it's a shift on market structure, actually. And our chalk happened exactly right uh, here, if I can see it well. Let me actually zoom in a little bit more. This is actually not a chalk, because the candle needed, this move to the downside needed to add a new, a new value. This move here needed to, you know, break this low. And so, because of that, we don't have a chalk. I was thinking like we had a chalk, because as you guys can see clearly, any candle was able to add a new max value and a candle was able to add a new mini value. But you guys can see that the mini value of the whole movement is right here and this candle isn't a, wasn't able to add it. So unfortunately not, we don't have a chalk right here. Let me continue to search. And I don't know why it's taking so long to show to you guys a chalk example. I generally don't know why. Okay, finally, 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 we, we found something. Here, right, you guys can see, you push to the downside, then retracement and push up. You guys can see right here, this candle made a max value. Any candle was able to trade a new max value, all of the following candles and just mini value. And then we had this huge push to the upside and with this huge push, you guys can see clearly the candle closing above the chalk example here. And then we could actually take the trade on some level right here but it will be very big actually seven pips of stop loss it's very big for me at least i normally trade with like three to five pips of stop loss on average it's three to be fairly famous on average but we can see that actually we generated a huge move to the upside right let me show to you guys more example maybe another pairs because it's very hard to find it right now on gold on euro usd sorry but look I just moved it to, to US 30 and I was able just to find a chalk, a bullish chalk exactly right here. Look, isn't this a bullish chalk? It's clearly a bullish chalk. It's a clearly, it's clearly a bullish chalk example. As you guys can see, price was able to turn, you know, bullish. Any other candle was able to add a new max value. The following candle was able just to add new value. This is, this is a, the example I told you guys, you know, not every time the candle will be like in bearish candle. Here we have bullish candle that made in, that was, that made the last win event of the whole movement actually. And then the price filled this level gap so we could take the entry, something like this. These entries, you know, still running, but yeah, that's a clear example of a job. Let me search for more examples. Those ones sometimes have job. I should actually, you know, turn on this SSS or my indicator because it will be way more easy for me to identify chalks using this type of indicator. So here we have another example of a bearish chalk. Sorry, a bullish chalk. 
you guys are probably thinking this is not a bullet shock. This is actually a shift for market structure. No, it's not. You know why? Because clearly here the high of the structure is actually right here and the low was here. So if this was the low and price never was able to break this high again to add a new high, so this can be the low. So the low will be transferred to this, right? So we have the low right here that came from some high above, then this high right here, then this low, because th this can't be a high because it wasn't able, you know, to generate a low. The low that was able to generate a high was this one. So why would they say that this has a low? So, and our chalk happened right here. It's true that, okay, when it happened, it happened almost simultaneously with a shift on market structure also. So we had basically both at the same time. So maybe that's not the best example. So this is a trade I actually caught like, I don't know, best week. Uh, yeah, I think to trade 20th of July. It's a beautiful trade, but this trade isn't using chalk. It's actually using a shift on market structure. Let me see here if I have a jock. Yeah, here I have a jock. You, can, you guys can see clearly right here that this candle made this high. And then the following candle added a new new value. And this candle right here, as you guys can see clearly, it wasn't able to, to you know, to close above. So I needed to transfer my chop to here. But then you guys can see that the following candle was able to close above. And this is a clear example also of a bullish chop. Exactly right here, we have another example of a bullish chalk also. You guys can see clearly here the price. Let me add a chalk. Okay, you guys can see clearly here the price made this high, then we made this push to the downside, push to the upside. Fair value gap, got filled and beautiful trade using a bullish chalk. Now that I we already talked a lot about bullish chalk and I should give you some examples, let's talk about bearish chalk, okay? Well, this beautiful thing you guys are watching right now on my screen wasn't on the script. Today, I actually caught this beautiful trade using chalk and a bullish chalk, by the way, and I decided, right, okay, why not? Since I'm talking about chalk in this part of the lesson, why not, you know, bring to this, to, to my audience, to you guys, this beautiful trade I catch it today, I took today and using chalk. Today is Friday, okay? The market will close very soon. That's why the volume is very low. You guys, you guys can see that price isn't moving that much. I can actually clip right here so you guys will be able to see that price already moved a lot actually because I took this trade uh, on London session, right? As you guys can see right here, it was at like, let me push this. It was at 10 and something. 10 and something, I took this trade. I actually sent this trade also to my signal group, okay? So everybody on my signal group also catching this beautiful trade. I'm probably posting, you guys have probably watched right now the print of the time I sent the, the signal and everything. And this beautiful trade is running till now. The whole point of me showing this to you guys, since it wasn't on the script, okay? I wasn't, it wasn't planned to talk about this because I didn't even knew that I would, you know, take this trade um, on normal session using a bullish chalk. It's just a coincidence, okay? And since it wasn't on the script, but we was talking about this this concept, I say, okay, I need to, you know, bring this to my to the to my audience so they can see the power of a chalk. I want you guys to think a little bit, what do you guys think happened right here? What do you guys think happened right here? We actually had, and I don't use a um, meta trader to do, to draw anything for a lot of I don't have any idea of how to draw things on MetaTrader. Okay, here we have a rectangles, right? So exactly right here, we had a liquidity grab. And with this liquidity grab, using volume, I was able to spot this liquidity grab and I saw that we grabbed the acceleration liquidity. And did you guys remember how I told you guys, what I told you guys a uh, minute ago or probably an hour ago in the beginning of this huge masterclass? Sometimes you don't even, you, you don't, think about a uh, structure. You pay attention to what's happening on a liquidity grab. You skip structure. Don't care about structure if we had a liquidity grab. And that's exactly what happened right here. I can guarantee to you that every single trader that don't trade, I can guarantee to you that every single trader that don't trade daily cycle, they was paying attention to this level, to this level right here and waiting to place a sell position or they even actually placing a sell position. Uh, they 
judge that does this, this point right here was a good point of interest to take their trade, and they all got stopped. It. While I'm on, on a buy position, since this point right here, as you guys can see, wait, 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 what's this? I remember this. <laughs> I need to disactivate the ray and with this little bit more bold and also, wait, I shouldn't be able to change this, whatever, doesn't matter. So every single trade that is size that is waiting price to touch on this level so they can, you know, start to look for sh short and opportunities or they short that as soon as price happened in this zone, they got stopping. But instead, every single daily cycle trader, he was waiting for what? For price to grab liquidity, they pay attention, paying a lot of attention to this zone right here. And while you got stopped here, while you all smart money on the block, I see the trader got stopped here. I got to my position exactly right here and look, it's a beautiful trade, price push to the upside, push to the downside, we have this little retracement, and then another huge push to the upside. Right now, this trade already hit a, a one to three risk wall. How do I tell you guys, when you trade chalk, it's lit. I told you guys that. And you guys can see clearly here what's happening. I'm almost, I'm over, I'm one to three risk wall trade already, it's way over. Uh, but there is another thing, you know, that you guys need to pay attention also right here. Let me see if I can find it again. So, no, nothing. We, yeah. So, this, uh, when I go to my, I will go to my training view very soon and show to you guys everything. And this one is the zone that, you know, was the final decision. If you had the knowledge to spot this zone, to see, okay, to identify this, let's call it pattern. I don't like to call it pattern because I want to place the daily cycle ready strategy as fast as possible from the, the sharp pattern trading strategy. I don't like it. As I told you guys at the beginning, for me, the sharp pattern trading strategy is one outdated trading strategy. It doesn't work anymore. But just to make everything clear so you guys can understand me even better and more simple, let's call it a pattern. If you was able to identify this pattern, you would make a lot of money, okay? Uh, how about you guys, I send this, this entry also to my Signal group. I will leave the, the link on the description. So if you want to join the Signal group, the link is on the description. Just search a little bit. It's there, you know, search a little bit, but it, it's there. It's maybe, you know, on the last line, on the middle, but it will be there for sure. Okay, just search for it. So this is one clear example of how you can use chalk to take your entries, okay? Another thing that is very important to shoot you guys, so you guys can understand even better the process behind this entry is what? Is my trading view. So let's go to my trading view and let me show to you guys the whole process and uh, that I use it to take this beautiful trade uh, on my trading view. Here on my trading view, as you guys can see, this is the beautiful trade I took. I'm planning to actually extend this to at least this level right here so I will probably make like one to 50 risk reward. But right now, I'm just, you know, waiting to see price at least take out this height or this low. I believe that if price made this push to the upside, made this push to the upside and, you know, grab liquidity on this low right here, it can actually grab liquidity and then move up again. Has I told you guys why I took this entry? This is a liquidity grab, you know? A lot of people saw it as a shift of market structure or in break of market structure, but for me, it was just a liquidity grab. Let's come to replay mode right here. Let me, I uh, turn on the Asia session also and volume. Let's go to one minute time frame. So here you guys can see to you that something is happening, right? So when I'm using the daily cycle training strategy, I'm paying attention to sessions, right? So if I'm paying attention to sessions a lot, clearly here I can see that we grab the liquidity on the on the bottom of the ASA session. So clearly right here, we grab the liquidity at those lows and after grabbing the liquidity on those lows, we, you know, we in this huge uh, liquidity grab, as you guys can see right here. Let me zoom in a little bit more because I want you guys to see it very, very clear, okay? So pay attention to this scan right here. Pay attention to this scan right here and see how volume, you know, spike it and made this huge difference between those or the, the, the other uh, candles. You guys can see clearly here that the volume was on a downtrend since this candle right here, okay? Since this candle right here, the volume, this candle right here, the volume was on a downtrend. So from here till here, the volume was clearly on a downtrend. We can even, you know, put this candle also, but I will use this. 
then suddenly what happened? Suddenly, as you guys can see, we grabbed the liquidity at the low of Asia session. And after grabbing the liquidity at the low of Asia session, that's exactly what happened in here with this post to the downside. So those tokens right here grabbing the liquidity at the low of Asia session. The low of Asia session, sorry, is exactly right here, right? So we grab the liquidity at the low of Asia session with this push to the downside, right? This push right here. After grabbing the liquidity at those lows, you guys can see another thing that is very, very, very interesting. Pay attention again to the volume. See what happened again to the volume. So after we made this huge move, pushing downside, breaking the train on volume, as you guys can see right here, with this candle that grabbed the liquidity, the following candle was also interesting, but pay attention to this candle here. We almost didn't have anything, any volume at all, any, 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 any volume at all. So I took this entry, of course, when price for three set and fill up to fill this fair value gap, as you guys can see right here. Right, we have this first fair value gap right here. I could actually wait to the price, you know, don't to touch or to fill this fair value gap right here, but I was with a little bit of FOMO, a fear of missing out because, you know, price may, may feel the first fair value gap and then skyrocket. And I was like, okay, I don't want to stay out of this position. I want to send signals because I want my team to profit. And then the cycle trading strategy, you know, you need to trust your guts sometimes, guts or nuts. Um, I'm divided right now. I don't remember the expression or the, the phrase, the, sense, the common sentence, but let's say it's, uh, you, you need to believe in yourself, you know, you need to feel it. And when you feel it, you just do it, okay? It's, you, the, the strategy will give you a guide and you follow the guide in some points, like here, when I will take my entry, I will wait the price to fill the fair gap or, or I will take on the first fair value gap. I decide to take on the first one, you know? By the way, I'm talking about the daily cycle trading strategy because that's the strategy I actually use to trade. I know this huge masterclass was, you know, talking a lot about smart money concept trading strategy or supply and demand, if you prefer to call it this way. But that's because people are more interested in learning about smart money concepts. You no, know? the strategy I personally use to trade is the daily cycle trading strategy. Do you guys remember the video I told you guys to watch in the beginning of this masterclass? That's the video, the, the link is the first link on the description, by the way, if you want to watch it, if you still want to watch it. In that video, I teach you guys a little bit about the daily cycle training strategy. That is the strategy that made me profitable, okay? That is the strategy that make me more money. Smart money concept training strategy, or for playing the man or the block, whatever you want to call it, it has one big problem. You will never be able to get consistent profits. Pay attention to what I said. I didn't say that you won't be able to make money but consistently, probably not. I dare you to, to tell me, to show me, to comment on the comment session, one smart money concept trader that was able to get multiple payouts, like four plus payouts from, Z, from a single founded account, from the same founded account. They all say, they all uh, in two first, normally on the first payment, like 80% of them lose the account, lost the account. Then let's say the other 20%, they, were, you know, they switch or change between the second, third, and fourth payment. So that's the main problem with smart money concept or order block, ICT, whatever you want to call it. That's the main problem with this strategy for me, okay? But I'm not here to tell you what you need to do, you know, to tell you what's the best for you. You choose. If you think smart money concept or any other strategy is the best for you, just go and test it, you know? Go test it with your own experience, you will see what I'm talking about because I also tried smart money concept on the past. I made money, but as I told you guys, I wasn't able to get like consistent profit month after month from the same account. I was like making money, then blowing the account, then pass each other again, make money again, blowing the account. Then this cycle just, you know, uh, continues to, to repeat and repeat and repeat. That's why I'm telling you guys the daily cycle trading strategy is the most beginner-friendly trading strategy ever created, okay? It's the most beginner-friendly trading strategy ever created. And if you want to know the strategy, the first link on the description is where you should click, okay? So let's continue right here. Let's just see clearly after this chalk, then we renew the minimum value without, you know, adding a new max value. And the candle that, the, the following candles that made the chalk, that confirmated our chalk, they was able to close above. So when price retreated, I took the entry. 
And without extending too much, you guys can say clear right here. Wait, 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 wait. Let me turn off this, turn off volume also. Delete those things right here. And you guys can see clearly price moving right here. Beautiful. The trade still running. I'm making right now. Let me see how much money I'm making right now. Let me check right here. So right now, and a trader. So as you guys can see right here, I don't know if it was you be able. Let me try to focus. Yeah, because I have a lot of lights, you know, that's that's bad. Let me do let me put it on dark mode. Maybe it will be more easy to see. So yeah, you guys probably are able to see right now. I don't think so. But I have too much light on my on my on my on my setup right here. That's why it's very difficult to the camera, you know, to focus on the fan. But right now I'm making a decent amount, thirty five grand, eight hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, no bad at all. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Let's talk now about bearish chalk. That's what we we need to talk about right now. So let's talk about bearish chalk. How can you identify? How can you take your entries? and you know take advantage of a bearish chart to make your money so since we already talking about bullish chart to talk about bearish chart it will be way more easy and fast right so to talk about bearish chart we just need to pay attention i won't you know explain this whole thing of foundation all those things anymore we just go straight to the point okay we need to pay attention to the candle so if on a bullish chart the base or the foundation of the chart we need to be a bullish candle on a bullish chalk. On a bearish chalk, what the foundation should be? What type of candle? Of course, a bearish candle. When we are looking for a bullish chalk, we are trying to take a long entry. When we are looking for a bearish chalk, we are trying to take a short entry. Okay? Sell position. So, a sell chalk or bearish chalk needs to be... Uh, for me, they need to have the, the following, you know, pattern. I don't like to say pattern, but whatever. You guys understood what I said. We need to have a bearish candle. Let me make it red. So it will be more, way more easy for you guys to understand. This candle is the base of the chalk. Okay. So this candle can be something like this. And it is the base of the chalk. Then the following candle. It no, not necessarily it needs to be a bullish candle, okay? As I told you guys on the and a, on a bullish example, also not necessarily the following candle will be um, a, a, a bearish candle. But in this scenario, let's say it's bullish because it's the most common thing to happen. This candle needed to do the following. It needs to add a new max value to the movement. So this was the, the previous max value. It needs to add a new max value and close above Okay, and it can't never ever do this. If this happens, we don't have a chalk anymore. Why? Because this candle added a new menu value. The candle, the, the type of chalk we need a new menu value is the bullish chalk, not the bearish. The bearish, we need a new max value. Okay, so this candle need to add a new max value so add a new a new uh, more value okay to the to the movement and then let's see another candle also added more value more more uh, uh increase the price even more then this candle did this and of course it's a bearish candle now we have a chalk because the base of the chalk is exactly right here and this candle was able to do what? To close its body below the foundation of the chalk. Okay? To close the body below the foundation of the chalk. This scenario, this is our chalk. If this happened, we don't have a chalk anymore. If this, let me do it again. If this happened, we don't have a chalk. We need to 
to wait for, let's say, the following candle to see if it's able to close the body below. Okay, so we need this type of, of formation of pattern, candlestick formation, to confirm a chop, to know, to say, okay, now we have a better chop. Let's go to the chart and let me show to you guys some example. Since we are looking for the better chop, I will pay attention to those zones, you know, zones where we just swept the, the, the equity at the Asia high. According to the cycle trading strategy, those are the best zones to look for chocks, you know. So right here, what we have, we actually had the shift of market structure, so we don't have anything here. Um, then price drop it so hard. Look here, we have a trap. Look what happened here. Is that right here? Can this be our chalk? Can this be chalk? Look. No, because the base of the chalk, of a bearish chalk, needs to be a bearish candle. And this is a bullish candle. But we actually have a chalk right here. You know what? Let me show to you. Exactly right here. If you retrace a little bit more, you can see this bearish candle. That is still valid, and any other candle was able, you know, to add a new mini value right here. The order before long candle was able just to add max value. And then you get the security here price retracing, closing the body below. And then this is a beautiful entry right here on this set value gap. We are on gold, so beautiful, beautiful, beautiful entry. You know, beautiful entry. Let's say one to 10 risk reward, smash it easily. Easily, 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 right? So this is a clear example of a bearish chalk. Let me zoom in on the example itself so you guys can see it again. So this is not our chalk. We can't have a chalk right here. Why? Because the base of our chalk is to be a bearish candle. But right here, if you, you know, go back a little bit, we can see clearly this candle making a base or a foundation and any other candle was able to add new value, just max value. The same thing happened here. We can't have a chalk here with this bearish candle. Why? Because this bullish candle was able to add a new X value. You know? Let's search for another example. As you guys can see, what a beautiful trade, by the way. Beautiful trade. I didn't took it, but beautiful trade. For sure, someone on, my, on the community took it, for sure. Uh, I saw something interesting here. Yes, exactly right here, we have another chalk. Right? Uh, no, after paying more attention, no, we don't have. Why? Because this bearish candle made the balance, but this bullish candle add a new new value. So we can't have a chalk anymore. This is not a chalk. I repeat, this is not a chalk. Let's search again when we set the top of Asia. Uh, here what we have, we don't have a chalk. Almost we had run exactly right here, but as you guys can see, it's more shift or market structure than anything else. Let me search for another chalk. Let me see here. If one of those candles was bearish, we could have one, but it wasn't. We have the entry trigger confirmation we have here actually is internal break of structure. Is the entry trigger confirmation we have exactly right here. But we are not talking about it yet because before talking about the internal break of structure, we need actually to talk about a shift on market structure. That is the most common one. It's the most common entry trigger confirmation used by smart money concept training strategy or any other whatever strategy uh, you trade, okay? Um, exactly right here, we almost also had a chalk, but you guys can see this candle was able to add a new new value to the whole movement. But if you pay attention a little bit back, we can see clearly here, this candle made the, new value, added, uh, made the foundation of the chalk, any candle was able to, you know, to add a new value. And then this candle right here added, you know, uh, confirmated our chalk. So close it. It's a body below the, the chalk, the candle, the foundation. And we could definitely take this entry like this. This will be probably a break even entry. Yeah. It would run to one to three risk reward and then retreat and took us out at break even. Then we had other opportunities to take the entry again. But None of, the, of, of those second opportunities was using uh, chalk, especially bearish chalk. 
Let me see if I can find more one more example so we can follow <clears throat> so we can continue. So here we have clearly here another bear shock. As you guys can see, the bear shock can't be here because we added a new menu value. You could also say, okay, this is the bear shock. It will be also right, okay? But the 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 most probability is like this one. Because just think with me, if this candle, if price made made you know uh, this push the upside and this push right here, close this this candle below and then retrace it. So because you are waiting for your chalk here you wouldn't be able or you wouldn't even see that, you know, we already had a job here, so you could actually take your entry when price will increase at this level. That's why, you know, selecting the first one is the best thing you can do. Well, with all those examples explained, I hope you guys learned about chalk. Let's talk now about shift on market structure. That is the, one of the most common, even the most common into trigger confirmation. And most traders, they call chalk shift on market structure. For them, shift on market structure is chalk. And for me, of course, it's not chalk. Is this shift on market structure is just another thing. Let's see that. So shift on market structure. Well, has to be guys, this is one of the most common entry trading information. And you guys probably already know this entry confirmation or is already using it for take some trades, okay? Some trader had other guys called this confirmation a chalk. For me, it's not a chalk. I want to present it to you guys what I call a chalk and what's a chalk for me. And this, for me, it's not a chalk. 100% it's not. And really it's easy to see it. it's not a chalk. Because this is one of the most easy trigger confirmation and almost everybody is using this entry confirmation to take trades. Instead of, you know, talking too much about it, I will just give you guys some, you know, general idea, okay? So this confirmation happened when we have a change on the structure of the market. You guys already learned how to restructure with me in this huge masterclass. So we had push the downside to upside, downside, upside, downside. Other way to see this is uh, buyers, sellers, buyers, sellers. Okay. So sellers joining the market here, won the buyers and pushing the price down. Buyers want the seller to heal and start to push the price up. And here we need to have a fight, you know, to see who win the control of the market, of this asset, uh, stock, whatever. Instrument, doesn't matter, commodity, you know. And that's the overall idea of this entry trigger confirmation. Who is in control of the market? This entry confirmation don't have like the best. Uh, um, a currency or strike rate. I can see, I can tell you guys that if you trade these, you will probably have like at uh, best case 50, 40 to 50% uh, of a currency. Okay. So between 40 to 50% of a currency using this uh, entity trigger confirmation. The whole idea again, I already showed you guys at the better share example. And the whole example we have buyers, sellers. So sellers join it here, buyers will join here again, and sellers join it here. So they push the price down. When price can start to go up, we will have a fight here. And you guys can see clearly here that buyers won this fight. Then buyers push the price up, right? Buyers push the price up. Sellers join it here and push the price down. Buyers join it here again, push the price up. Here we will have another fight to see who can win the controls of the market. We say we can see clearly that buyers won again. Then sellers push the price down. Buyers start to push the price up. We will have a fight here, buyers won again. Then sellers join it here, push the price down. In this, you can see a clear difference right here because we are on a spot where buyers join the market periodically. So here we will have another fight and buyers should win this fight. But who actually won was the sellers. So if sellers won, we have now a shift on market structure. So the whole idea is if market is bullish, buyers need to win every single fight that comes. Okay. Buyers need to win every single fight that, you know, happens. If they lose one fight and lose the control of the market, so sellers to control, we have a shift from market structure. If that don't happen, if buyers still winning and winning and winning and winning and winning all the decisions, all the fight to, to see who controls the market. So the price will continue bullish. But if buyers lose one fight, 
So instead of one that fight, we now have a shift on market structure. Simple like that, very easy to understand. Let me show you guys right now some examples. So here we are on one minute time frame. Pay attention, okay? To understand this, we need also to read structure. So that's why this can be a little bit confusing for you guys, because you, you guys need to understand how to read structure and I will show to you guys that the wearing structure is a little bit more spicy than other traders. Why right? we saw that on a, on a, on a part we talking about structure, right? So here, clearly what's happening, we have a high, we have a low right here, we have a high right here, we have a low, a uh, high right here, and this is a low. So in any other moment, the price was able to generate a new high Yes, it was when here. So what is the low? The low is here and the high is real. Everything that happened inside is just internal structure and I personally don't care about it. So we can see that shift on market structure actually just happened here when price broke this level. And when we retreated, we didn't even respect these highs. That's why I told you guys this entry trigger confirmation don't even have you know, a usual currency. We have this, this is the our February gap, right? So if you try to take your entry here, you will get stopped. Let me search for another example or even a better example. So yeah, exactly right here, we have a lot of shift on market structure, but it, this is, uh, I, I, I can say to you guys, this is a clear stop loss, but this is so obvious that this is also in liquidity creation and sweep, you know, in manipulation that I, I, do, I, I, I refuse to believe that someone would, you know, fall for this. You can see clearly that we have low, we have high. Right here, we have this low, we have this high. What I told you guys, normally to identify these type of tricks, we just, you know, place our feeble. And you guys can see clearly here, wait, let me push this to this level, that these retracement, let me zoom in. You guys can see clearly here that this retracement from this high to this low wasn't even able to touch any 50%. So this is a trade. I would take this trade if I was at the chart at the time, but I will take this trade exactly right here because I will be able to identify this as a clear manipulation and, you know, easy one to five risk reward trade right here. Easy, easy, easy one to five. Because this is clearly manipulation. I already teach you guys how to identify that. Well, let me see. Okay, here, we have a shift on market structure because after we set these lows, we made a low right here, right? That came from, we have this low, we have this high, we have this low, high right here. Wait, 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 high right here. Low, high, low. This is the high, this is a low, this is a high. We also had a shift on market structure here. So we have this huge thing happening right here, this whole thing happening here. We grab the liquidity, we made this high, we made this low. And here we guys can see clearly another shift of market structure. And this one, work it, clearly work it, right? So we could easily take this trade on this fair value gap right here. This fair value gap right here, this is the fair value gap I'm talking about, okay? and place our stop loss below these lows and, you know, try to make one to five. I don't know if it was possible. It wasn't. We made in a max one to 4.99. That's actually funny because if you, you know, just took your, take your entry a little bit lower, you could easily make one to five like since here. So yeah, this is easy, easily, easy example how, of how you can identify and use and um, shift the market structure in your favor. Let's talk now about what? Let's talk now about internal break of structure. Another anti trigger confirmation that most people don't use, but I use, and that's what, you know, I care enough, that's what actually worth. And let's talk about internal break of structure has one, in there, has one uh, entry signal confirmation. Let's go. Internal break of structure. It's one ent entity trigger confirmation that they use a lot when price suddenly give or show to us 
and you just spy in one direction. Here, you guys can see clear examples of a bearish and a bullish internal break of structure. So let me, let me explain to you guys what happened in those two examples. On the first example, we have a price moving upwards, okay? Price is a bullish trend. Suddenly, we had a huge spike in volatility and price, you know, spiked. Price increased very, very fast. This huge one minute candle you see sometimes on the chart. Then the retracement happened on the following phases. And you need to pay more attention to those phases than anything else if you want to identify a internal break of structure entry signal confirmation, okay? So the first signal, the first step, the first phase is that price will, you know, do this neural retracement. Then price will try to, you know, break this high again and establish a new high and high. And it won't be able to do that. Why? Because sellers will aggressively, sellers will aggressively join the market here and push the price down again. And this is exactly where the internal break of structure into the trigger confirmation happen. Let me explain that again, drawing, because I know when I draw people, they understand it even better and more easily. So we have buyers, sellers, buyers, sellers, a lot of buyers, right? Sellers joining the market, buyers joining the market. And right here, we will have a fight between buyers and sellers. Because sellers push the price down and buyers that join the here are trying to push the price up. This fight is what we need to pay attention to it to see if the next in the next phase we will have a internal break of structure entry signal for formation or not. Okay? This fight is the fight we need to pay attention to it. So when this fight happens, if sellers win, if sellers win, so buyers lose this fight, we will have another move happening on the market price. So sellers won, price will go down. So if price is going down, is retracing, right? Because, you know, sellers won this fight, price start to go down. Price will find again another level right here that we have that previously buyers join it. So we will have another fight to see who is in control of the market happening right here, okay? So if sellers join in here, they, is, they are able to push the price down. When price retreats to this level, what they will try to do? They will try to defend their position. If they, are, if they have success defending their position, price will go down, but buyers join in here, so when price retreats to this level, they will try to defend their position again, and this fight is also another phase, it's the second phase that is very important to see who will control the market. If in this fight, sellers win again, so we have this, okay, we just saw one internal break of structure, one internal break of structure, it's signal, one internal break of structure, entry signal just happened exactly right here with this push to the downside. And then when price retreats, we can take our entry. So let me explain this again, but now on the sell side, okay? Sellers, buyers, sellers, buyers, sellers, a fight will happen right here between sellers and buyers. Buyers won. Buyers will push the price up, but let, remember, sellers joined Firstly, right here. So we will have another fight right here. If buyers that join in here are successful again, they will win the second fight. And since they won, price will retreat. We will be able to take our entry and go with them. Let me draw it again. Do the same thing I did with the buyer example. Uh, that is this one. So you guys can understand it even better, okay? So price is going down. Price is moving down. And then suddenly we have a huge spike. Then price retreats. 
by the try, price will try, you know, to do a new lower low. But buyers that join in here will fight and will win this fight. But remember, sellers also join in here. That's why price went down in the first place. But these buyers will fight. They will win this fight. Price will start to go up. When price hit this level, sellers that join in here and made this retracement to the downside, they will fight and see who won, who wins, sorry. If buyers win, we will see this. So on the retracement, we can take our entry place, our stop loss below this low. This is one important part I actually forgot to say. I just remember it right now. In every single of these trades, you place your stop loss in this high or in this low. So I know you will, I, I know you are probably asking yourself why. If I'm taking the entry here, right, on this second retracement, I should protect my stop loss here. But no, that's not what will happen when you're trading internal break of structure entry signal confirmation. That's not what will happen, okay? You actually protect your your uh, stop loss. You take your entry here and protect your stop loss on this high, okay? This is what you will do if, if you want to trade internal break of structure entry signal confirmation. Let's go to the chart and let me try to show to you guys some examples very quickly. So, uh, look like here we have some, no, we have, we have just a shift on market structure. We don't have that. The, the thing is that I need to see you spike on price, you know, that's the thing. Um, okay. Here, what happened here? It's just, okay. Here we have something very similar, but actually if you pay attention closely, we can see that we actually made a new low and low. So no, um, this is. One example that will be break even trade, but you guys can see clearly here, price pushing up, pushing up, spike in price, retracement, retry. So buyers joined here, sellers joined here. That's why price yeah, went up in the first place. So here we have a fight and sellers won. We had another fight right here and sellers won again, right? Let me pay attention even more close to this cause now that I see sellers won again, I need to confirm it. Confirm this information. Okay, sellers won. Yes, doesn't matter if it's just one tick below. Okay, doesn't matter. And then with this retracement, we will take our entry on this seven gap right here. Place our stop loss where? Above this high, okay? So something like this. So this is the place where we had the fight between uh, uh, sellers and buyers that joined it here. Here we have the fight between buyers and sellers, that sellers that joined it here, buyers that joined it here. In this scenario, actually, sellers joined it here, buyers joined it here. So when price hit here, we had this the fight between sellers that joined it here and buyers that joined it exactly right here. When price retreated and hit this level, we had the fight between sellers that joined it here and buyers that joined it here. So yeah, that's exactly what happened. But as you guys can see, this would be a clear uh, break even trade. Let me see if I can find something else. So, okay, here we have another clear example of internal break of structure and three signal confirmation. Here you guys can see uh, this low, okay? Price mean is you should push the upside, retracement, push the upside again, retracement, push the upside, and we could easily take our entry here and you know, but this, uh, this stop loss would be so huge that I, I probably won't even take this trade to be fair with you guys. Because for this, I don't think so. I will take this entry and then it will be clearly a break even trade. You will make at max one to two risk rewards. So it's nothing, nothing to it. So what we have here, more that's a better, the best example. I'm, I'm still looking for the best example possible. Okay. Here we have a shift of market structure. So they'll count what we have here. Push to the upside, we have, push, we have a shift of market structure, don't count. And we have also a, 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 a equity creation here. I'm saying this is shift of market structure because if you guys pay attention, you will see securely here that we actually, you know, broke above. So if I place my favor from this low to this high, I can secure that this retracement never touched 50%. So probably this is a trap. And as you guys could see, yeah, it's was pretty uh, easily detectable, you know. 
Uh, of course, this ended up being a break-even trade because I would expect at least price to, you know, do a new high. And it never did it, so it ended up retreating and become bearish. But still, I actually showed to you guys just bearish example. Let me look for bullish example of what I just told you guys of of internal break of structure entry signal confirmation. Uh, okay, so here we have one example. Okay, we have a 15 minute time frame just to search for the example. Here we have a huge spike in price to the upside. Of course, here we also had another thing that is interesting. Because when I talked about job, I never showed you guys a 15 minute time frame chalk, for example. And exactly right here, we have a 15 minute time frame chalk. Uh, 15 minute time frame chalk. You guys can see clearly here. With this 15 minute time frame chalk, I called, you know, go to lower time frame and refine to find a entry when price retreated to this uh, candle right here. So I called actually search for entry right here. But talking about internal break of structure signal, entry signal confirmation, we can see push to the upside and retracement, push to the downside, sellers won, retracement, further gap that feeling, and then you drop in price. So our internal break of structure happened here. And then we could actually take this entry at some level right here. This our stop loss above this high. And look for one to 10. What is risky world trade? Something like this, okay? I'm on 15 minute time frame, but it doesn't matter, you know? What happens on 15 minute time frame happens also on one week time frame, on four hour, on daily. And this is very important, okay? Pay attention to chocks that happen on a daily time frame, one hour time frame, weekly time frame, 15 minute time frame. Pay attention to those chalk. One of the biggest trades I ever took was with a daily chalk. I saw a daily chalk, so I start to refine it and found a beautiful demand zone on the extreme of the chalk, got to the entry and hold that, that trade for weeks. Weeks and weeks straight, like six weeks, a month and a half, okay? Biggest trade I took ever, 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 okay? Well, as we saw, entry confirmations help you increase your chance of success in the Forex market by reducing false signals and increasing accuracy. It also helps you to manage your risk and reward ratio by setting your stop loss and take profit level. Entry confirmation is one of the many tools that you can use to improve your trading skills and results. The concepts I just presented to you in this video are very crucial to understand and start to make money on the forex market using smart money concept trading strategy. But did you know that there is a strategy specifically designed for beginner traders? This strategy can help you achieve all your dreams you have in mind and help you become a profitable trader with your own funds or even with prop firm funds. For example, using this strategy, I was able to become the top one FTMO trader of April 2023. If you want to learn this strategy, click the first link in the description of this video and watch my best video ever. I recorded this video showing every single step every single thing you need to know in order to understand and make money from the market with the most beginner-friendly trading strategy ever created. So check out the first link in the description of this video. And ladies and gentlemen, I will see you there.